Hey everyone, this is Holly from Hot Humble Pie. Welcome to my fall series. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you click that button. My daughter gave me this wood round that she bought last year for fall. I think she just thought it was a little bit plain. She didn't know what to do with it other than use it as a riser. So I decided to dress it up for her a little bit. I found this free printable online. It will be down below in my description box. And I went ahead and printed him up on tissue paper. It's gift tissue paper, just like you use to put in a gift or gift bags. I taped it on some cardstock with masking tape and then ran it through my printer. And now I'm taking a glue stick from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna go ahead and stick this down on the wood. Now I had to use tons and tons of glue stick. When you're doing this kind of surface that's a little bit rough, be sure to be really generous with your glue stick. And I chose this image because honestly, when everything is said and done, it looks very much like you would have with like a wood burner where you burn an image into the wood and that's what I was going for I was going for a little bit more of a natural picture on top of the wood and this guy I mean look at him he's absolutely adorable he's just a feel-good image so this is what we went with and it came up totally totally cute I find it's really helpful when transferring with tissue paper to glue half of the image down and then the other half. So you saw me place it down and then hold one half down with my hand, glue it down and then do the other side and work the wrinkles out. Now, because I was really, really generous with the glue stick, the image is actually kind of moist, which is what I wanted. So this one's wrinkling a little bit more than what's usual and that's okay because I work it all out, all the wrinkles come out. You just have to take your time and do what I'm doing with my fingers. I'm just pressing, rubbing, pressing, rubbing. Then I kind of tear it off because it's wet. But while it's wet, if you want to do Mod Podge, now's the time to do it. If you wait for this to dry completely and then go and try to seal it in with Mod Podge, you're going to risk having it crinkle up on you. And I've had that happen on furniture and it was really upsetting because it took me hours to do. I did everything perfect. There wasn't one wrinkle at all anywhere and it was literally almost ruined. And that's when I discovered the trick of spraying, you know, I just thought of it like, oh, let's just spray some clear varnish on here so that we'll seal it in with a plastic before we apply a wet plastic and it worked like a charm. So if you find you've accidentally let this dry, you probably should go ahead and seal it in with some kind of clear varnish or a clear polyacrylic, just something that doesn't yellow all Though on this craft, I don't think it would matter if it yellows because it kind of has golden warm undertones and that way your image won't wrinkle. I did it while it was wet, as I said, and you'll see at the end here, he stays completely straight and wrinkle free. And I think this guy came up so, so cute. Let me know what you think in the comments. So it's been a while since I've done a coffee can craft and I thought it would be fun to do. I use the coffee can from Walmart. My Walmart still sells coffee cans in their brand of coffee. Kirkland's, if you go to Costco, still sells coffee cans. You can also get Kirkland brand coffee on Amazon. And one of my subscribers came on last year and said, that the paint cans at Home Depot, Lowe's, etc., like home improvement stores, are super cheap and would make a great substitute. You can also go to restaurants and ask them to save you one. There's a couple options there, but I love coffee can crafts. I have a whole video on it if you missed it. I'll be leaving that link down below in my description box as well. It's a great video. So I'm just starting off with some of my homemade chalk paint and I'm giving this a nice thick coat of white paint. And here's a free printable that I created for you. It will be down below in my description box and you can get that as well. And I started out by just cutting it with some scissors and then I'm going to go ahead and use Mod Podge to stick it down. Now the trick here with the coffee can if it has grooves like this is you do have to use Mod Podge. The glue stick will not work. 
For those of you that watch my channel, you know I love the glue stick and it's so great for so many applications. It doesn't leave wrinkles because it's a very dry glue and you can always seal it in with a varnish and then put Mod Podge on top. You know, there's lots of things you can do with that. And some people wrote, it, oh, you can also iron things down on Mod Podge, but I'm... That. I always like to take, the, I mean, that's a great tip, but I always like to take the fastest, easiest way. So with this one, you do need a wet sponge ready to go, not too wet, and you do need to use Mod Podge, and you do have to press really hard, not so hard that you tear the paper, but hard enough to make sure that you don't have any wrinkles, and it will take shape to those little grooves, and see how I'm kind of deliberately sticking the sponge in those grooves, and it works beautifully so also one thing you want to do as well is you don't want to like if you sense that your sponge has the Mod Podge on it a little bit try not to use that side of the sponge switch it around use different sides because you can accidentally tear it or lift it up if it gets too sticky from the Mod Podge these are some Dollar Tree spoons I had bought them for an Easter craft I was going to actually do something really cute and I might do it next year, so I'm not going to tell you. It's a surprise, but <laughs> I had another idea for an equally cute craft. In fact, this is my favorite craft in this video. I love this. I look at it every morning when I get up to have my tea and my breakfast, and it gives me such a good feeling. So you... Well, I didn't have the right color, so I just took some regular green paint and regular orange paint and mixed it in with white paint until I got these nice, soft, kind of muted colors. And then I used the color Antique Parchment from Apple Barrel Paint to get my nice cream color. And I'm painting both the front and the back of these spoons. And then I take some of my antiquing wax. Any antiquing wax will work. I'm using the one from Folk Art. I love that one. And I'm just going to go ahead and kind of do a quick little faux wood on the handle there. And then you're also going to see me go up and distress the top of the spoons with the wax as well. I'm also using the antique wax to go ahead and distress my little coffee can and make it look a little more fallish. I don't know if that's a word, fallish, but I want it to look more like the colors of autumn. I personally love the colors of autumn and I love to keep that in my decor for me anyway. That's like the whole purpose of decorating for autumn is that that is so that you can have those colors in your home in abundance because it just brings that warmth and that coziness into your home. So I'm just using this brush tapping it on lightly, smearing it, and just doing it by eye, relaxing, take your time if you do this and have fun. Next, I'm using a regular old pencil. You don't have to use anything fancy for this. And I'm just gonna kind of color in some grooves here to make, you know, I, we're making pumpkins here, like a little mini pumpkin patch. and. The pencil works just fine to add that character there. And then I take the raffia, it comes in a set of three. It's also down below in my description box if you're interested. It comes in green, red, and this traditional color here. And I just double looped it and then tied a bow. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut the craft sticks well, I did cut the craft sticks and then I cut them at the angle on the top to kind of imitate the pumpkin stem. And I'm just gonna glue them on the top of the plastic spoons. And then I'm just using the furniture pen from the Dollar Tree. If you guys haven't gotten those, make sure you pick those up. They are so great for quick and handy, like distressing or staining. That is the color Walnut. It comes in like a redwood type color and a black color. My favorite is the Walnut one. I do, I use the black one occasionally, but I haven't used the red one yet. But next I'm gonna take the Spanish Moss and I'm just gonna kind of crunch it up in my hand. I'm gonna add it at the top of the pumpkin near the stem there. And then we're also gonna add it at the bottom just to create a little bit more of the shape of the pumpkin, like the illusion to the eye so it's not so oblong. And then I went ahead and I added some tissue paper at the bottom. You could use a plastic bag. I chose tissue paper so that I can kind of puncture it. I actually stuck my scissors through the Spanish moss and poked some holes down there to get these little guys to stand up straight, but we're all done and I absolutely love this.
Next, I'm taking a pizza pan that I painted on the reverse side, so it's upside down. That's my favorite way to do it because it has that nice little ledge there for a border. And I used Rust-Oleum chalk paint so that it would adhere really well. I have good luck with that one. And I'm using the Elephant Gray by Apple Barrel Paint to do some dry brushing. This is a little wooden truck here that I got at the Dollar Tree, and I think they're carrying this all year round. At least at my Dollar Trees they are, so that's nice. And you can paint it any color you want for any season. I thought it would be fun to use the antique parchment to do this truck, and I am keeping it this time. I stayed with the antique parchment. So I'm just gonna give it one coat, let it dry, and then I'm gonna do some dry brushing with my antique wax. That's just my favorite look for the fall season. It comes up perfect. If you don't have a Dollar Tree or you're one of my international viewers you can always print these things up online like you can find the truck online print it up glue it down on a cereal box with a glue stick so it's nice and dry and kind of get that 3d look that way you can also use a thicker cardboard if you wanted to imitate wood more and then use a multi-purpose filler or polyfilla around the edges to cover that cardboard and camouflage it on this part of the truck, I decide I want that little wooden bit in the back that's supposed to be on the you know top of the truck to stand out. So I'm using the wax full strength. Now I'm just taking some black paint and we're gonna go ahead and paint the tires black and paint the center of them white. This is a little red barn I found on the clip art site where it's free and I will leave that link down below in my description box. Now I had to go ahead and print this up on regular computer paper because I had dry brushed the pizza pan. Now for those of you that watch my channel you know my favorite transfer method at the moment is using tissue paper just like you would use for gifts gift tissue paper and I tape it onto cardstock and then run it through my printer and put it down that way but because I had already done the dry brushing you see here's the great thing the tissue paper right it's transparent that's why I love it so much but then it's transparent so <laughs> I forgot and that would show the dry brushing through and it doesn't look good so I ended up having to use computer paper it was no big deal though this came up so cute it did not detract from it at all in fact it made it look kind of a little thicker and hardier more like a more woodsy I guess I don't know if that's the right word but it's paper which is wood and when it's thicker like this it just kind of went with the barn look so it worked out good and I'm gonna go ahead now and just dry brush some white paint on it and then we're gonna go and add the nautical rope around the edge So I showed this in a previous video, how you can go ahead and take regular Amazon boxes, cut the little shapes that you want, and then just remove the paper top and you end up with this really neat serrated top. Use sandpaper and do it, or a sanding block and use it really lightly to get the rest off and it just makes for a super cute, free, you know, whatever you want to cut out of it. You can do Easter bunnies, pumpkins. It's just a great crafting piece. You can even make it look like faux galvanized because it is serrated like this or even just antiqued or aged metal. I'm using orange paint and then I'm taking the nutmeg brown from the Apple Barrel line. Both these colors are from the Apple Barrel line and dry brushed it on the front of this little pumpkin, used it for the stem and now I'm applying a little bit of the Spanish moss at the top. It's so cute and again these make such cute pieces or it's a cute material for all kinds of crafting. Christmas trees too. It just looks super cute. So now I'm taking the same Spanish moss. We're going to glue this underneath the truck. I just thought it kind of looked like hay or some of the stuff that sprawled on the ground in front of a barn. I thought that was cute. And for this truck I decided I wanted him like a 3D. So I'm using two of the Dollar Tree wooden cubes. I glue it on and then I'm going to glue it on the front of this little pizza pan here. Now I do glue it at a slight little angle where the truck looks like it's going uphill a little bit. I just thought that added more cuteness and character. You don't have to do that. I just like doing that. And because I did want the pumpkin to be at the front of my scene here where I'm filling up the back of the pumpkin, I do add a Dollar Tree cube to the back of that pumpkin so that I can lift him up and move him towards the front of the fall scene there that I want to fill up in the back of this truck. And it's almost like a little vase. You can start 
tucking anything you want down there that's fall. Leaves, flowers, even that like little small pieces of corn, 3D pumpkins, and there is some lavender leaves left over, which I actually thought looked like a little vegetable kind of. I just thought it added some color and a more of a farm look. And we're all done, and I absolutely love this. These are some leftover plastic Easter eggs and I'm going to go ahead and give them one coat of Rust-Oleum chalk paint. That one just tends to adhere a little bit better to the shiny surfaces because my homemade chalk paint I just used a high quality acrylic paint. I don't have the other one left and now I'm just taking the antique wax and giving it a dry brush and then I'm using the Dollar Tree lightweight spackling which I mixed with quite a bit of white paint to go ahead and start creating the top of my little acorns. So you want to make it a little thicker obviously because the top of the acorns has to have that little lip and then I'm just patting my craft stick to create all those little nooks and crannies and bumps that you see on acorns. At least the acorns where I live, they kind of look like this. I'm going to do this to all four of them and then let them dry. A nice little trick that I do with the lightweight spackling because it is very dry and crumbly is I add about a fourth cup of paint into the tub and as it dries out I just keep adding paint until it no longer works like a spackling but that takes a long time and usually I finish it before that happens. Once it's dry, I go ahead and take a nail file and just file off those really pointy tips that look like frosting because I definitely want this to look like an acorn and not like frosting. And now I'm using the color Nutmeg from Apple Barrel Paint and I'm going to go ahead and start with my first coat on my little acorns. I did let the nutmeg color dry all the way before I start with the second color, which is Burnt Umber from Apple Barrel Paint. And this one, I'm not gonna paint it solid. I'm just gonna kind of tap it on. We're trying to recreate that dimension and look of the acorns. So while that's drying, I'm using this Folk Art Metallic Paint in Sterling Silver. This is a Dollar Tree basket. I picked up two or three of them because I had some good ideas for DIYs. I've already used it once. I think in one DIY video. This is my second one and I'm just going to paint it with that silver paint. I mean it's just to make it look a little bit more you know again for for me anyway fall I go to the pumpkin patches I hang out at farms so it's a perfect time to do the farm look. Now I'm just taking some elephant gray from apple barrel paint. I tapped it on with that sponge to make it look a little bit like the real acorns do around my house and I decide to take the wax that's the antique wax there. Use it just a tissue, it's not a baby wipe, and just kind of stain them. Look at that. Isn't that cute? I mean, that looks like a real acorn, at least my acorns around here, the ones off my little oak trees. <laughs> That's what they look like. I think all acorns kind of look different depending on where you live. They might have subtle variations, but more or less, that's my acorns. And then I'm using Spanish moss in the bottom of this tray. I do have some trouble getting these guys to stand up, so I have to use a little bit of hot glue just to hold them a bit more steady. And then I decide, you know, oh my gosh. I, well, I didn't decide, I actually realized Oh my gosh, they don't have a stem on the top. I need to add a stem. So I go outside, I grab a twig off the ground, and I'm just going to go ahead and cut those down and make some cute little stems for these guys. And you also saw me trimming the Spanish moss. Obviously, you know, if you put it in there, it gets a little wild and wooly. So you do need to trim that with some scissors. And now I'm applying those little stems. Look how cute they are. And just to add a little extra touch of cuteness, I do take some raffia and make little individual bows for each one of those stems.
Next, you're going to see me take the furniture marker from the Dollar Tree. It comes in a set of three in the color Walnut. And I'm just going to go around the edge there where I couldn't quite get the wax to go all the way to the top and I didn't want any white to show. But it also emphasizes and defines where that little lip is on the edge of a real acorn. So it comes up super, super cute. These are so cute in real life. I hope the camera does them justice, but they are one of my favorites today. This is probably going to be my last baby can formula um, DIY just because my daughter's little boy stopped drinking the formula. He's on milk now, so I'm going to make the best of it here. But I went ahead and I removed the bottom of this. Now, I did this DIY back in May and it came up so beautiful. And I mentioned in that video that I felt like doing 50 of these. So I definitely wanted to do one more. Even I think I might do more. I just think these are absolutely gorgeous. I don't know why I'm obsessed with these little pocket cans. And I like the one that's made out of cardboard here because obviously it's a lot easier to manipulate manipulate and you know I don't have any heavy machinery I don't even think I have a rubber mallet at this time so I really needed something that I could just work with with simple tools my hands pliers needle nose that kind of thing so once I shaped it into a pretty flat looking pocket that's why they call it a pocket can and you paint it you can't even tell it's not a can it's just beautiful you'll see but I'm just giving it one coat of my homemade white chalk paint Here's an imagery that I found on Pinterest. She actually made a pocket can and used this imagery and I thought it was one of the best ones I saw on Pinterest. So if that person happens to see this video, cause I tried to find out who it was, but unfortunately it was shared from somebody else who shared it from someone else. It was impossible. But if you happen to see it, one in a million chances, <laughs> you did an amazing job. So I printed this off and it will be a free printable down below for you as well. Printed it up on the tissue paper again, using my glue stick again. These these are still the best way, if you, if you don't have a Cricut, and even if you have a Cricut and you wanna get more intricate imagery down on your craft, this is the best and easiest way to do it. Most discreet way to do it, unless you can paint really well. So I'm just taking and applying that, pressing out the wrinkles, and now I'm adding some of the antiquing wax. Any antiquing wax will work for this. I'm using the brand Folklore because it's the cheapest one but they all work the same and I'm just dry brushing a little bit on the front and I also did it on the back and now I'm using some leftover ribbon I got from Hobby Lobby on 50% off I didn't have enough of it so I'm going to cut it down the middle and make a longer strand and glue it on the top Since this is a fall craft, I knew I wanted some raffia in there. I couldn't quite figure out how I wanted it, but I ended up cutting a bunch of strands that were loose, tying them at the top and leaving a little, little I don't know if that's like a little mini fray at the top there, a spray, and just gluing a raffia bow on top of it. So you can see what I'm doing. I glued that little strands that I tied together. I glued that down first, and now I'm gluing a raffia bow on top of it. And the raffia bow, I just spun around and around on my fingers and tied it in the middle. It was that easy to do. And I poked holes using my cuticle clippers from the Dollar Tree, but you can use scissors. This is the nice thing about the cardboard. It's super easy to make the holes on the side, no problem. And again, when these things are decorated, you can't really tell what they are. I mean, you can cover them with all kinds of trimmings and they're just gorgeous. Anyway, I decide that I'd like a few beads on either side of my raffia. So I'm adding a couple of the wooden beads. I think I put four, yeah, I did. I put four on either side. And of course I'm opening my fall leaves that I got off Amazon and using some of the roses from the Dollar Tree and the greenery from the Dollar Tree. I love that greenery. Look at that, that's from the Dollar Tree during the summer that was really beautiful and that's it I think this is absolutely gorgeous autumn wall decor This 
was a fantastic find at Ross. It was $1.49 and it's a super cute basket. I just felt like it looked a little bit more like a Wizard of Oz basket for some reason. <laughs> Maybe it's because it's the print of Dorothy's dress, but I wanted to see what I could do with this. And you can do this same principle, what I'm going to do today for this DIY with Dollar Tree wire baskets. In fact, you can take two of the square ones, cut the bottom out of one with wire cutters and attach it together on top to the other one with some wires and then do this exact same principle and have a beautiful holiday, autumn, fall or Thanksgiving basket. So after I remove everything, and it took me a long time, I start cutting out the extra large jumbo craft sticks from Walmart, and I measure them so that they're gonna fit on the side. And we're gonna try and create more of a farmhouse slash apple basket or something to put your pumpkins in, just something that looks a little bit more like autumn. I do recommend that you use a good quality hot glue for this craft so that it will stick to the wood and the metal. I'm using a glue from Surebonder here that claims it's extra strong. But I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple other things to this basket that will ensure that these craft sticks stay in place. One, I'm gonna go ahead and put nautical rope on the top and the bottom. And after I stain these, I'll go ahead and put some nautical rope in the middle as well. Here you see me adding a little bit of water that I put on my brush to some antiquing wax. I'm using the Folklore brand, but any antique wax will work. Now, you can apply it with a baby wipe, but it still doesn't glide quite as well as it does when you add water to it. I still find it functions more like a wood stain. When you add water to it, it's still not enough water there because I end up taking a tissue to wipe it off. I mean, you can really water this down and it works beautifully as a stain. And if you want to use a baby wipe, you can. You're just not going to have have quite the glide factor that you will if you add water. This is what it looks like when it's dry. Isn't that beautiful? So I did end up, as you saw, painting it on and then just wiping off the excess. That was working fine. So I thought, you know what, this is working. I'm gonna go with it. You can do it however it works best for you. If you do use one of the Dollar Tree like gold baskets, you might want to spray paint it black first. But as you can see, once you're done putting the nautical rope on the top, bottom, and in the middle, there's no way that these are going to come off. The way I handled the bottom of this basket was to cut out some really thick quality cardboard. If you do the two Dollar Tree baskets on top of each other trick, you'll have a bottom on the bottom basket, so you won't have to worry about this so much, but you could still do this if you wanted to. And I just cut it so that it fits, and then I cut craft sticks. You didn't, I didn't have to cover with craft sticks because there's going to be um, some Spanish moss in here or hay or something during the fall season but I think it's more psychological I just wanted it to be all wood since I went to all that work and so I covered it with some craft sticks and then I took the jute twine because I wanted it to be really thin and dainty looking and covered the entire handle and yes it took me a long time but I think it was beautiful and worth it because the results are very pretty and I took my flame as usual floated it over there just to get rid of the excess hair I'm taking some of the Spanish moss and now I'm going to take some of this Amazon raffia that I got that I absolutely love. I've talked about it in previous videos. It's super strong and thick and it kind of functions more like a ribbon. It's just really beautiful and it was very inexpensive. It's down below in my description box if you're interested. And I'm just going to go ahead and tie a big raffia bow on the side for a little bit of the season's, you know, garnish on there and add some velvet pumpkins inside the middle and that's it we're all done and I think this came up so so cute
this is another Hobby Lobby discount clearance sign. I got it for $1.59. It's regularly $15.99, so it was a great deal. And I just go about removing the sticker with a blow dryer, then I tear off the cardboard, and then I use the Dollar Tree little cuticle clippers to remove these little tacks in the back because they weren't in that tough. You know, if they're really strong, you actually might bend these cuticle clippers because they're you know, they're $1.25. So <laughs> I wouldn't risk them with the more expensive cuticle clippers either. You should probably use a screwdriver at that point or some needle nose pliers. And I'm removing any of the hardware on the back there to make it nice and clean and ready to paint. So I'm giving it one coat of my homemade white chalk paint. I always mention this because I get a lot of questions. The link to my video, I actually made two, but the first one I made, the ingredients kind of tough to find if you're in the USA. So I made another video with three other healthy choices, non-toxic that work absolutely fantastic for homemade chalk paint. And they're cheaper actually than the first video now. Here's a free printable that I designed. I just thought coffee and autumn goes together perfectly. And I always do tea stuff. So I thought for you coffee drinkers, this would be fun. I'm also a coffee drinker too. I love coffee. I love coffee and tea. But I went ahead and designed that on canva.com. If you'd like to make your own free printables, check out canva.com. It's C-A-N-V-A.com. So I just went ahead and used my glue stick again. This is printed up on tissue paper, same method as the first one. This is my favorite way to transfer. For those of you that follow my channel, you're probably getting tired of hearing me say that. But for those of you that are new, it's a fantastic way to do it because tissue paper is super wafer thin. It's almost transparent and it's the best way to get an image that's really detailed, almost like a print onto whatever you're crafting. So vinyl, you're kind of limited. I mean, it's one color and it's very thick and you can definitely see it in the light you know if it's hanging on the wall and the window shining on the side you know uh, on the side of it where it comes in you will definitely see the vinyl a lot more than you're going to see tissue paper so I opt for the tissue paper and I think it's probably cheaper so again here's a great find at Hobby Lobby 39 cents please check out those clearance aisles when they're going when they sell out of everything the clearance gets kind of eh but when they're especially right after holidays please go and check out their clearance aisles because they're fantastic. And you pick up these little hardware pieces. I got a bunch of knobs and handles, super cheap. And as you can see, you just use a plier to screw in, I believe that was counterclockwise, and the other part comes out so that it makes it a nice flat surface for you to glue down. I'm just using some Gorilla Super Glue for this. It held beautifully, and I glued it down on the top for a little bit of extra decor. So now we have our silicone molds. I've talked about this before. They're in my description box, the ones that I bought from Amazon. I just squirt hot glue into them and see how I'm pushing the nozzle down into those little tiny crevices. You need to do that to get the nice formation. You can also put them in the oven to make sure your hot glue melts as well. And there is a little bit of trimming excess stuff off. It's fine. You just do it with some scissors or cuticle clippers. I'm using the Folk Art metallic paint in copper to add these to the top just so they kind of pull in that hardware and then I distressed it with a little bit of my white chalk paint and I think this came up so perfect for farmhouse kitchen decor on a cozy autumn day. Let me know what you think. For this next project, I just went up to my TV screen this time, not my computer screen, and I actually traced out a pumpkin shape. And then I traced that onto some cardboard, and I'm going to cut three of them out all together. So I'm using a cereal box. Now you can use poster board for this, but cereal boxes are free. I wanted my surface to be nice and smooth. So I just took this old cereal box, cut it out and put it on top and now I'm using my glue stick and I'm going to glue down each one of these papers that I printed. Those will also be free printables for you down below in my description box. Next I'm just going to go ahead and decorate these pumpkins using some of the raffia. I'm going to use, you know I do a little bit of a different style on each pumpkin but I'm going to use some of the brown raffia or maybe that's tan raffia 
for the first pumpkin and then I'm going to use a green bow on that one. Now at first I'm thinking if I do green bows on every single one of these it will suffice for pumpkin leaves but then I realize afterwards it's not quite not quite meeting the expectation that I kind of wanted so here I go I'm putting that I'm going to put some at the top here, cut it down, and I end up shaving this one down really short because it just isn't quite working out the way I wanted it to. But everything comes out super, super cute at the end, but that's how I started, so I just wanted to explain to you how it got there. And then for the other two pumpkins, I used the raffia to do the edges. So for the first pumpkin, I chose to do some of the strands from the nautical rope I pulled apart, and I just spun them and kind of twisted them because that one's going to be in the middle and I wanted it to be a little different. And then for the other two, I used the raffia around the edges. You can edge it with whatever you want. You can even use spackling if you want. That looks really good because then it looks like ceramic or something, if, especially if you paint it. But I'm just adding some more of the jute twine. I'm adding some leftover ribbon right there from the Hobby Lobby, 50% off. That's my last piece right there. I thought it would be cute as a little accent. And then here I'm cutting up some of the boxwood that I got from Amazon for little leaves. I love of using the boxwood for little pumpkin leaves when I make these kind of crafts and just like I did with the other leaf for the apple I am going to go ahead and to burnt umber and stain those up a little bit as well there I go there's my burnt umber and of course I used a little bit of fire to try and burn the hair off but I have to be careful because this is a paper craft <laughs> and I don't want the whole thing to torch but there I go I'm just using there it is that's what it looks like isn't that good Next, I have these votive candles left over from another craft that I did for Valentine's Day from the Dollar Tree, and I thought they would be so cute for this craft too, but I want to make them look a little more woodsy, so I paint them with my homemade chalk paint, let it dry thoroughly, and now I'm just dry brushing on some of the antique wax until we get this kind of look. And it doesn't have to be like perfect wood, I'm just looking for a warmer color than see-through glass. I just thought it would be, you know, something different. And I'm taking some of the Spanish moss, I'm going to kind of crunch it in my hand, and you'll watch me kind of try and, I want this to droop around the edge kind of gracefully like almost a weeping willow I guess if I can so you'll see me kind of push it inside the votive cup and then press it down the side because I'm actually breaking the little stems so that they'll lay flatter or as flat as I can get them and I do that in each cup and then I also add some Spanish moss behind each pumpkin as well Lastly, you're going to go ahead and see me put a little dot of hot glue on either side of these votives. I kind of put it in the Spanish moss and it hits wherever it hits. It's either the moss or the glass, but it works to hold these up straight. So that's what I'm after. And that's it. We're all done. And they came up so beautiful. Here's a trade that my daughter-in-law got, but she didn't care for the color of it, and she gave it to me. And I do like the Harvest Home on the front with the burlap. I think that's so cute. So this is a little too difficult to sand because there's too many little intricate corners, and it's just a small piece of wood. So I'm going to go ahead and slap a coat of white paint on it. That's another way that you can change the stain is just to get some white paint on there. But I think I'm going to go ahead and distress this just kind of make it more my style I guess and we're going to go ahead and paint the outside and the inside of this crate. Next using the antique wax I'm going to go around and start to make it look like an aged old crate. And 
and that's what it ends up looking like. I absolutely love it, but what would a grape be without some seasonal decor in it? So I'm just dumping some pine cones in here. I'm gonna put some pine cones, some pumpkins, some leaves, just some different decor for fall. It comes up so, so cute. Now, what I didn't film and I end up doing you know, because we were looking at it, kind of studying it. And I thought, you know what? I think this would look good with a little bit of greenery. So I do add a little bit of boxwood here and there. Or I think it's eucalyptus, sorry. I use a little bit of eucalyptus that I got from the Dollar Tree. And these velvet pumpkins, my daughter-in-law just bought a whole bunch of these last year. So I'm using them up. And I think this came up so, so cute. Well, you'll see in the final reveal. a mason jar that I snapped up during the Valentine's Day time because they often disappear during the fall time in my Dollar Trees and they are perfect of course for this season and Christmas so this time when I saw them I grabbed them up so actually I only got one so let's hope they come out again so <laughs> I haven't actually checked my Dollar Tree to see if there's any right now but I'm using some needle nose and just taking off that metal part and a blow dryer to remove this sticker. Thanks for the tip someone gave me a long time ago. I think it was last year, but it works great. I also used tweezers initially to gently pry that because I find those metal pieces bend really, really easy. So I just kind of stuck some tweezers under there, you know, was lifting it a little bit, a little bit. And then I did needle nose. So here's a free printable. It'll be down below my description box, of course. And I'm just using the water trick here where you paint the water and then you tear it off. I, for, for a long time, I avoided this because it used to spread and mess up my ink. But I got a new paintbrush that I'm using and I noticed it's not doing that anymore. So now I'm thinking it might have been the, the paintbrush. I think maybe it just held too much water and drenched my paper by accident. And so I'm gonna use a glue stick for this one so that we don't get any wrinkles and I apply it generously. That's just a Dollar Tree glue stick. Any glue stick will work. And I'm going to put my little sign down. Now, in my mind, I was thinking apple butter with this. And last year I made one that was white, like with a shiplap and those are just really, really common. So I wanted to do something different. You know, I, I wanna change up my decor and have different things going on each time. So this time I did it kind of with the feel of apple butter. I actually love apple butter. There was this place I used to go to that sold nothing but apple stuff and they had the most amazing apple butter. Anyway, I'm just gonna go ahead and put the antiquing wax on and then I do take a little bit of white paint to go over that just to kind of tone it down just a little bit so it's not so dark. But I really love that you know I the way this came out it definitely gives a nice warm feeling and on the camera right now it actually looks darker in real life it's more softer I don't know why the maybe the camera because it's in 4k it's picking up like too many details but in real life it's very soft and kind of muted and very pretty so I went ahead and I glued the metal piece back on the top and I'm wrapping some of the Dollar Tree jute twine around the top because it gives me another surface to glue my bows to that's a little bit more sturdy than just the metal. And I'm taking some of the Dollar Tree uh, ribbon in the burlap and I'm also using the Baker's twine again. I really love the little splash of color that this gives and the different feel and texture. I'm using it in green and then I went ahead and combined it. You can see what I'm doing. I, I went ahead and combined it with the burlap ribbon and then the bow at the top I actually spun around my fingers with the jute twine and made another bow with some more of the little baker's twine. And then look at this. Look how cute and perfect that is for something with the theme of apples because it's red and green. I love this. Now I also save my leaves from my florals. I recommend you guys do the same. My favorites are usually the ones from the roses because they pass for fall leaves and they pass in this instance for apple leaves. So I thought it would be fun to add some little apple leaves at the top. I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue them down and tack them so that they're in a nice position.
Next, I'm gonna go ahead and take the color Burnt Umber from Apple Barrel. It's one of my favorites. If you follow my channel, you figured that out. And I'm just gonna kind of tap it on the ends and a little bit in the center, but I'm trying to make it look more like apple leaves because apple leaves usually do have some browning and imperfections, and I think it just looks more authentic this way. I'm just using one of the Dollar Tree furniture pens here and distressing the edges. I'm using the one this time in the color black. Lastly, I tied on some of the nautical rope for a hanger and I'm just burning off the extra hairs and we're all done. For this craft, you're going to need one of these little chicken wire frames, some decorative picks from the Dollar Tree, some rub offs, and some craft sticks. So I start by cutting these Dollar Tree pumpkins in half, and then I decide to go ahead and use some Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree, which at first I was going to do burlap, but I thought the Spanish moss looked cuter. And I'm just gluing these little pumpkins down now on the Spanish moss. So you can see with the third pumpkin there, I had to cut it down really thin. I had to take more off because it just was too bulky at the top in order for everything to kind of look, I guess, balanced. And some pumpkins, you know, pumpkins in a pumpkin patch are never all the same size. They're all different sizes. So that looked more realistic. And all you do is you just shave off a little bit more. It's super simple to do. And if you don't have the chicken wire, I've shown in previous videos how you can take those Dollar Tree waste baskets and go ahead and cut them and take a Dollar Tree frame and hot glue those around the back, paint them gray, and you have a perfect faux chicken wire. And now I'm just trimming the Spanish moss a little bit so it's not hanging over the edge. And then I do reinforce it with little dots of hot glue in the back. I try to make it not too noticeable, but you see it a little bit, but when I put it on the the tear tray you're not going to see it so I decide to take those stems out and just make a cuter stem I guess I cut out some cinnamon sticks I thought those would make the perfect little stems I just cut them up and glue them on top of the pumpkin and now I'm making a raffia bow and I'm going to put one on each one of these cute little pumpkins So now I'm using my craft sticks and I'm just gonna make a cute little farmhouse sign for the top of this sign. Now, even if you don't like farmhouse, if you're not into it, there is something about fall, we all have to admit it because there's those pumpkin patches and if we have kids, even if we don't have kids, we might go there and you see the tractor ride, you pick a pumpkin, you just do the whole little fall thing. So it kind of becomes farmhouse even, even before farmhouse is really, really on trend, it became farmhouse ish during fall so i you know i'm doing that for this theme here maybe i'll do some modern diys for the fall i was thinking that might be a fun change i'll put that in my little community section at some point and have you guys vote on that to see if you're interested in that but what i did with the craft sticks on the edges i cut them straight and then i just took my clippers and kind of dug in the edge of them at a vertical manner i guess so to make little cuts and uneven edges to make it look a little bit more like a rustic farmhouse sign. Next, I'm going to give it a rough coat of some white paint so the edges are still showing. I give it a quick blow dry and now we're going to do a transfer on there. And unfortunately, I did not let the paint dry quite enough so you can see I lost some of my transfer, but no big deal. I just take my brown permanent little Sharpie marker here and touch it up. It's a little bolder than it would have been, but it still looks awesome. And that's it, I'm gonna glue it on the top of the sign now. And I hope the camera does it justice because this came up so, so cute. 
and the next step is to glue something on the back so it stands up straight. And I chose a tumbling block and one of those little wooden cubes you can get at the Dollar Tree. And that's it. I absolutely love the way this DIY came out. This is my inspiration piece and again you're going to need some of the towering tumble game here and you're going to start by gluing them together in a formation where you have three and then three and two sets of six just like that and then when you have those two sets glued together you're going to go ahead and glue them on top of each other like you see me doing here and i also did two you can see it up in the upper right or upper left hand corner there those are already done we're going to be making a total of three little books and this isn't a new diy by any stretch of the imagination it's been around i think for four or five years but believe it or not i don't have one <laughs> and i want one they're so cute i mean i made a little super super tiny one for a tiered tray decor just all year round for farmhouse but I really wanted one for this this season. I think they're super cute, in particularly for fall. At least the designs I've seen are super appealing. So that's what we're doing today. So now we're taking some of this aged paper I got on Amazon. Again, the link is down below in my description box if you're interested in getting the one that I'm using. And we're tracing just the edge here. I'm choosing the part of the paper that has like an orangey tint to it because it's autumn and I just want a little bit more of those kind of colors I guess this is supposed to be like the binding of the book the edge and it's supposed to look old so <laughs> I thought it would go really good and we're just going to trace three of those out and once you have those three cut out of course you're going to take and bend them around the edges of these little cute little rectangle shapes you made to get the marks and seams so that when you go to write your words, you'll know where to write them. And of course, I'm freehanding this, so if you choose to do it that way too, I recommend that you do it in soft pencil first. I'm not confident with my writing, even when I start with the letter at the end and then the letter at the beginning and try to move my way to the center, I'm still, you know, I just struggle with this. This isn't my strength. So if you have a stamp or if you want to put this through your printer and print up the words, you can do that too. Either way, but if you do do it freehand like me, make sure you use a pencil first. I'm going to use this painter's pen here. You could get them at Walmart and I'm going to go ahead and trace out my words. I did end up having to go over these about three times because when the paint dried, you could still see the pencil even though I had written it really, really lightly. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of a heads up on that. And now I'm just gonna glue them down using some hot glue. You can use wet glue if you want to. I just appreciated the instant stick. And what I did is I moved really, really quick to press them down while the glue was still liquid. And then I decided that I wanted my cute little books to be orange so that they kind of really popped the whole vibe of fall and autumn. And so I'm doing this now and it looks fine because once you distress and you add the little lines everywhere, you're not gonna see, you know, just keep your hands steady. But if you want, or you know that you want yours to be a color, go ahead and paint it ahead of time. And then I thought, no, Holly, don't take a shortcut here. I want my sides to look like book pages. So I'm just taking the color Antique Parchment by Apple Barrel Paint. I'm taking off some hot glue here. And I'm going to paint the sides to try and look, you know, try and make them look like book pages. And the color for the orange that I used is the Dollar Tree Orange. I've spoke about this in a previous video. I think their paints are pretty decent. I pick them up when I can. 
I just don't like the way they come in the squirt bottle because if I squirt too much out, I will waste a lot of paint because I can't get it back in. So this way, I just put it, you can see the little orange bottle there. That's an old paint bottle that had orange paint in it. And I rinsed it out a little bit, but it was pretty much the identical color. So I just squirted the Dollar Tree paint in there and that's the color I'm using. Next, I just took my gray Sharpie pen and started drawing some lines. These don't have to be perfect. In fact, the more imperfect they are, the more realistic they look. You don't want like even symmetry because pages don't look like that. You just kind of want the illusion that there's book pages there. And then I take my brown little Sharpie there to the right, and I'm gonna go ahead and accentuate where the books separate, you know, where there's supposed to be three books to try and kind of tone down where the two layers could join because you don't want that to stick out. You want them to look like they're thicker books. So that's what I do next. I also go around with this little brown Sharpie here and I outline all of the books. So along the seam where it's supposed to be the binder, in between, I just kind of use this to distress it a little bit and just accentuate the detail that I want to stand out more. Next, I'm gonna use this little checkered uh, buffalo ribbon here and tie it around the side end of the book and then just put some fall garnish on top with some bows and a little pumpkin and a leaf and just do some fall that was a little bit different than the books i showed you i guess but i just think that looks really really cute so that's what i end up doing For this DIY, you'll need a window box. I got mine from the Dollar Tree and this printable I designed that is available down below in my description box. Just click on the link and it will take you to it. And the first thing I do is cut off the top sign there. I'm gonna save that for another DIY and I give it a thick coat of white paint. Now the camera turned off again and I guess there's a program I can download from the actual manufacturer website and run it through my camera so it stops doing that. So hopefully <laughs> I will figure that one out, but it's super easy. I just took a glue stick and I spread it on the back of the printable. Glue stick worked just fine. I just covered it really, really thick and then I pressed it down inside the frame and now I'm just adding a little Spanish moss and because it is a window box, I'm just trimming it up a little bit to look nice and neat. But what would a tear tray be without a window box? You always have to have one or two of those. It always looks so, so cute during the holidays. And now I'm using one of my favorite methods for a really soft kind of blurry distressing is a blush brush with some antique wax. And I'm just gonna kind of lightly, very lightly distress this just so it doesn't look so, so clean. I want it to look a little bit rustic. And that's it, but it came up so cute for a tear tray. For this craft, you're going to need the tumbling tower blocks and some of the wooden pieces from the Dollar Tree. And if you don't have those, you can always use a wine cork. I'm showing you here, it's very, very similar and they all come in different shapes and sizes. And then we're going to be taking those towering blocks and gluing them together. The first set you're going to do is a set of six. I did it right at the top there, you can see above my hands. And then the second sets are going to be little sets of two. After you have those two glued together, you're going to be gluing one of those two sets on either side of that center formation with six. 
So you'll kind of have like a cross shape like that right there. You're going to be doing that and we're going to be doing it three times and then a set of, well, a set of three and then a set of two. Next, you're going to make sure that they all line up. Unfortunately, the towering tumbling blocks and probably the Jenga blocks too, I'm guessing. I've actually never had Jenga blocks, the real brand name ones before, but I'm guessing they're not perfectly even in sized too. So you definitely, when you put your little formations together, see how some are shorter and some are longer. The most important part is that your base is even so that it's not crooked and rocking and rolling there and that your little pieces on the top fit together perfectly. So you can see that one side is shorter and what I'm doing is just putting a bigger blob of hot glue to lift it up so that the pumpkin's nice and even on the top and then I'm sneaking my glue gun in there to glue the rest of it down. So I have extra hot glue on that little side where they were shorter and that will even everything out. And don't worry about it because we're gonna be fixing that and you won't see that when these are all done anyway. You can see I'm putting a little bit more glue in there too. I'm just making sure that it dries nice and even and straight. Make sure you hold it too while it dries, just like I am, so that it doesn't suddenly sink because you know the hot glue is liquid until it solidifies. So you wanna hold that nice and still until it's dry. So this time we're just making another formation here, but this time there's only going to be two on top of each other. And we're making little rustic primitive type pumpkins here in case you haven't guessed. I think the towering blocks are so much fun, especially for tiered tray decor. And if you're really careful with the how, you know, how you craft with them and how you paint them, you can make some really high end looking stuff and, you, and the emphasis is of course you have to be careful on how you craft and how you put them together but i've seen some amazing videos over the summer and you know i was like oh my gosh you made that with towering blocks i mean they really are impressive when you do it correct so we're making some little cute primitive pumpkins today so now we have two little pumpkins there with a stack of three and a stack of two and here comes the spackling for this part, I'm only looking to fill in the little gaps where I joined the little crisscross formations together because those are bigger. I'm not worried about all the other little lines with towering blocks, or is it towering tumbling, towering blocks? I don't, anyway. <laughs> It's impossible to get all the little seams, but for the look I'm going for for these pumpkins, that's gonna be perfect. So for this first round here, I thought I wanted these guys to be an orange and like a soft green. And when I was done, I thought, no, that after I painted, I just thought that definitely didn't pick the energy up that I was envisioning in my mind when I thought primitive. Because primitive, if you look that up on Pinterest or online, has a definite energy to it and, and a vibe. So that, you know, even if I dry brush white over this, which I did end up doing, I ended up painting them orange and green and it was still way too bright for the look I was going for. So that's the nice thing about paint is that you can repaint. So I take the color Antique Parchment in Apple Barrel Paint and I go ahead and paint both of those in that color instead. And after all of that, I'm just doing some dry brushing here with the antique wax. This is down below in my description box. You can click the link, it will take you right to it if you're interested in the one that I use. And I'm just making it look a little distressed here, a little bit more like a primitive pumpkin. And now I'm just taking those little Dollar Tree stems and I'm gluing them on the top to make a cute pumpkin stem. And I tried to choose the thinnest ones in the bag. There's some chunky ones and there's some thin ones and that's the best you can do. And like I said, you can use a wine cork. You can even use a cinnamon stick if you don't have anything else. 
I'm going to top each one with a raffia bow with Dollar Tree raffia. And then I'm gonna add a cute little flower just for a pop of color. And that's it. I think these came up so, so cute. And they're such a simple DIY to do. And they add a lot of height and dimension to your tiered tray. So this is my inspiration piece. This is real, but I just love the vibe and the feeling that it gives me. So I want to try and recreate this for my tear tray. This is a Dollar Tree glass, some pom poms and some cinnamon sticks. And I'm just taking the Dollar Tree orange paint now and doing a coat on this glass. Now there's a story with the pom poms and you'll see as the video moves on here, but we're going to just go with it for now. And I do the second coat of orange paint with a sponge because I just found that kind of gave it a little bit more texture and a, just a nicer look, I think. And I took some black paint and just edged the top just like the original photo was. I love that look. I thought it was really, really cute. And I took a paintbrush, dipped it in some paint. Now I know you can use a toothbrush, you, <laughs> but I, this is what I had right near me and I didn't want to go get a toothbrush. So this is what we're using kind of messy I went and washed my hands but it worked brilliantly as you'll see in a minute I get those speckles I'm after and we get that cool enamel look which I was after only fall style here with orange it comes up beautiful look at that perfect so I used tissue paper and ran this through my printer this is a free printable it will be down below my description box I created it and you can go ahead and print it up and I tried to get it to match as close as I could with the vibe of the one I saw. So I show you how I went about taping the tissue paper on the back of paper. I just use paper, but actually I probably am going to get some cardstock because that would work a lot better. And I did leave the tissue paper in two layers just because I was afraid it was going to tear. It is Hallmark tissue paper. It should be really strong, but I just didn't want my computer, my, you know, my, I mean my printer getting jammed up. So that's there's that and I tried to cut it out to look like a little pumpkin a little bit now It was a perfect match when it was dry and when it got wet and The double layer of the orange under the cup and the tissue paper made it go a little darker, but No worries. We make it all blend in and it looks beautiful at the end so first item on the list here is to weight down that cup so it stops slipping up. I use a paint bottle to do that and go over the letters with white paint because the background was orange and the tissue paper was so thin and see-through, the letters really kind of just faded out. So you might want to leave that little part where you think the letters are going to go white or maybe even cut out the pumpkin shape or whatever shape you want trace it onto your glass when the paint is all white and then go about painting it orange so you can deliberately avoid that area. There's different ways to do it, but I just wanted to warn you if you do decide to paint it orange, you're going to need to brighten up those letters a little bit. And then I decide to use a heart template and add a heart to the left of the writing. And then I just stick some paper towels in there and lay this cardboard on top that I traced and cut and it's kind of a little bit bigger so that there was counter pressure so it stays nice and even and I'm just gluing my cinnamon sticks down and the pom-poms down now to try and recreate the look that you know is my inspiration piece I glue all the pom-poms on and I'm thinking this looks okay you know kind of looks like marshmallows it looks cute but then I go and I sprinkle cinnamon on it and as soon as I do that for whatever reason I looked at it and I thought, oh my gosh, it looks like I used cotton. And suddenly that whole expensive kind of cute higher end look disappeared. I didn't like it and I kind of just thought, no, no, it's fine, it's fine. And the next day my husband goes, oh, that is such a good DIY, that's so cute, but except for the cotton part. <laughs> so I went, that's it. So this is what we do next. We tear it off, but actually I didn't have my camera rolling. It was on there very, very good. 
so you can see how I actually tore the, the cardboard a little bit underneath because I, I had to put uh, the tweezers underneath there to tear it up it was stuck so hard and I cut all the cotton off I ripped the cinnamon sticks off and you know you can go cut a new piece of cardboard if you wanted or I could have done that but it was such a perfect fit that I didn't want to so I just go about repairing this basically and I take a little bit of tape and I just take that up and turn it upside down and we start again with another idea so I grab my joint compound now you can use spackling for this it's just mine's getting a little drier than I'm comfortable with and it tends to dry with too many cracks and I remember when I was reading about joint compound versus spackling that the joint compound has oil in it and it takes longer to dry but it's a little more flexible so I thought just intuitively that would be a better choice real whip cream has fat in it too and oils often they'll add oils in it and so I don't know why I just felt like that might add some more realism because if you actually compare spackling with joint compound side by side the joint compound does look more like whipped cream it's a very silky soft texture it even dries kind of rubbery so eh, you know you can do either or but it's and, and they'll look good and then I just treat this like I do with my banana cream pie that I make for real at home I take the knife when I put the whipped cream on top and just kind of tap it to create these little peaks and points and I think it looks so so pretty that way and of course we can't forget the cinnamon so I sprinkle a little cinnamon on top and this also makes a great air freshener you guys this is the next morning when it's dry and unfortunately it's unavoidable to kind of mess up your little black rim as you can see I do have to go back over it with a paint pen and I just kind of add in all those little details just taking a Dollar Tree permanent marker to touch up where it's white on the cup and that's it. I love this DIY. For this DIY, you're going to need four bottle caps, some tumbling tower blocks, some craft sticks, and some decorative picks and wood of your choice. So I started by gluing a set of three together and a set of four. So you'll see the three on the left, and I'm just finishing up the three on the right, and then the, there was one in the middle that was four. And now I'm gonna glue those together like this. Next, I'm going to measure and cut my craft sticks so that they fit on the side. We're making a little wooden wagon, you guys, just so you can envision what I'm trying to do here. <laughs> and then I'm going to glue those sticks up along on either side, kind of like a wooden crate, but it's instead of having little spaces in between, although I think crates sometimes don't have spaces either, but so we're kind of doing like a little crate wagon, I guess. And then I just took those green scissors and trimmed off the excess that was hanging over the top. Next, I'm going to paint my wheels with an all-purpose black paint. And I painted little white spokes on them and I went, that is just too loud and obnoxious. So I painted the top surface there where the wheels show with the antique parchment from Apple Barrel Paint. And then I went ahead and used the territorial beige from Apple Barrel Paint to paint the spokes. And then just to kind of roughly dry brush the you know, wheels, I did paint the backside of the wheels black as well. 
I'm just showing you all of these steps in case you want to duplicate this exactly. You can skip the black if you want, but it did have a primer in it, so it was helpful with holding on the paint. If you do just use acrylic paint, this is definitely a craft I would suggest misting with some hairspray or misting with a little bit of varnish after the paint dries just to make sure the paint doesn't chip. And you can go to the Dollar Tree and find little wheels off race cars and bikes, but it makes it a much more expensive craft. So if you're trying to keep your costs down, this looks totally, totally cute and it was free. So now I'm just gluing my wheels down and I did dry brush some territorial beige on that little wagon there just to distress it a little bit. And I paint my wheels black on the inside afterwards. I don't know what I was thinking. Do that before. And I'm just taking the black paint now and distressing, lightly distressing the edges of the little wagon so it looks like it's been outside on a farm. And this is a reed left over from a Dollar Tree basket I took apart for another DIY. It is a perfect handle for this wagon because it bends and takes shape and you can shorten it easily. So that's what I choose to make my handle out of, but you guys be creative and do whatever works for you. And of course, I paint the handle black on the top and on the bottom. Now I'm just adding some raffia inside the wagon. And I did have to add more than I thought, so I did end up putting like a little bit of burlap under there to kind of help lift it up a bit. And what I'm trying to accomplish with this wagon is for it to carry pumpkins and firewood. I am using the other half of the styrofoam pumpkin that I cut in half because a whole one won't fit in there. And this is the next day. I decide to add some shadows in where the different wood pieces meet because that was the whole point for it to have kind of a crate look. And I didn't worry if I scribbled over a little bit. Don't worry about it. It just looks like a scratched up old wooden wagon, but it came up so, so cute. For this craft, you're going to need a small pre-made mason jar and this free printable here that I designed it will be available for you down in the description box. And we're just going to paint this little mason jar white. And I'm painting with my DIY chalk paint. For those of you that are new to my channel, I made two videos on how to DIY dirt cheap chalk paint several different options because some people had different comfort levels with what they wanted to use turns out the most recent video with my favorite ingredient which i mentioned in that video because there's three to choose from is a lot cheaper than the very first video that i made because things have changed since the first video you know it all has to do with supply and demand but you can save so much money if you make your own chalk paint these are one coat high quality silky beautiful finishes and if you're trying to keep up with Waverly or any kind of chalk paint for that matter, it's hard. So if you make it yourself, you know, you can save a lot of money. So check out that recent video. It will be down below in my description box if you're interested. So for this printable, instead of cutting it out, I'm going to go ahead and tear it out. Sometimes I'll tear it a lot bigger. You know, I'll allow some room there because I'll take a lighter and burn the edges. Those are some of my favorite looks at fall and Christmas time. Now, some of you will come on and say you can wet it to tear it. And I know this. <laughs> and thank you, by the way, for all of the people that come on and give tips. It, I love it. It is so helpful to share with each other and you never know your comment by, might be seen by many, many others. So you never know who you're helping. So leave those tips. But personally, when I do side by side comparisons with wedding paper that I tore and tearing it this way, the difference between the edges is minuscule. So 
and also I have found when I wet the paper sometimes the paper go you know the moisture goes too far and I end up tearing it by accident into the words so I just prefer to do it dry but if you're used to a certain method that you've been doing for a while do it your way you know you should always stick with what works for you and I want to say too the only exception to that rule for me is when I'm decoupaging furniture I use napkins and with napkins it does seem critical to use the water because you kind of pull it apart and it sh you know the fibers on the edge of the napkin become so wispy and fine that it makes them disappear into the furniture a lot better so with napkins I definitely use water and tear but for now we're just going to do it the dry way and now I'm just going about drawing those faux shiplap lines on this now I purposely don't measure them evenly apart because I think it looks more legit if you actually go on a farm where they're doing pallet signs the wood you know the different wood that they use is usually different widths and kind of just random so I do it the same way on my crafts and I just use a regular old pencil that works great for me and now I'm going to use some gray paint there you can see I just put a drop on my paper and brushed it downwards so there's hardly any paint on my brush this is a really wispy soft light distressing and using one of my most favorite ways to apply paper because it's almost a full proof wrinkle proof method is using the Dollar Tree glue stick and I'm just going to go ahead and glue that down and then after it dries in about two hours I will take it outside and put a clear varnish over it just a mist I'm not doing a big heavy varnish because this isn't going to get a lot of heavy use and then using some of that gray paint again I used it on the edge of a sponge just to softly go around the edge here and lightly distress this little piece now you can see I made a boo-boo and this is why I always say oh it's so good it's paint you can just paint over it I'm just gonna hit it with some more white paint and then just do a little bit more distressing I'm leaving mistakes in now because a lot of you are coming on and thanking me for that to see that I do make you know boo-boos and I have to make adjustments that's how you get your perfect piece and don't get discouraged by that it's all part of the creative process it's all part of what should bring you joy it's fun just have fun remember it is just supposed to be fun you're making beautiful home decor that will bring you joy when you look at it and this was meant originally to be a hanging piece so I'm just using some wire clippers to clip that wire off I'm going to use a tumbling tower block as a stand in the back we're gonna hot glue it on and that's it I absolutely love the way this came out For this DIY you're going to need the tumbling tower game blocks and I'm starting off by gluing them together the thick side side to side in formations of five each and I'm making three of those formations. Once you're done with that, you're going to glue all three of these together to make one big cube shape. For your second pumpkin, you're going to do another row of blocks, but this time you're going to do six and you're going to make three exactly like you did before and glue them together exactly like you did before. And you will end up with another cube type formation, but it'll just be a bit bigger. And you're going to do this exact same thing again, except this time you're going to do seven of the towering blocks. So just to clarify, there are groups of three there if you look at it vertically if you wanted to glue it on the sides instead and I glued those three little clumps together in seven rows six rows and then finally 
five rows. And if you haven't guessed already, we're gonna make a little primitive pumpkin topiary here. And it just kind of gave the vibe of the shiplap look. Look how cute that is. So this is what you should have so far. So the camera turned off, but it's no big deal. I just painted the bottom in the orange paint from the Dollar Tree in the Crafter's Square. It's called Crafter's Square Ponchur Acrylic Paint. It's I looked up the word Ponchur and it's just translated into English as paint. It's French. The, the language detected was French. So it's just their squeeze bottle acrylic paint. And this pumpkin I'm going to paint in Joanne Craft Essentials Crafter Edition paint in the color leaf green. And then the very top pumpkin, I will be painting this one in the color of Antique Parchment by Apple Barrel Paint. Next, I'm going to give my little pumpkins a quick blow dry, and then I will be using the antique parchment to do some dry brushing over the two colored pumpkins. Well, I guess they're all technically colors, but I can't obviously distress with the same color on the antique parch top little pumpkin. So this is just gonna be for the orange one and the green one. And then for the top little antique parchment pumpkin, I'm going to use territorial beige and do some dry brushing with that and now this is what you do when you make a mistake you can see here i put a little bit too much on so it blobbed and all you do is take a wipe rub it out and make it look nice and soft and voila keep going in territorial beige is an apple barrel paint by the way i didn't mention that but here I am taking the Dollar Tree Spanish moss and I'm just kind of forming it into like a little bird's nest. I guess I decided that moss in between each one of these little pumpkins would be so, so cute. So I'm just kind of making it thin enough so that it doesn't tilt the pumpkins, if that makes sense, because I want to make sure that they're nice and flat. So I just kind of made it really wispy there. And I'm going to do this in between the orange and the green and between the green and the cream colored one as well. Using a little Dollar Tree wood piece, I'm just adding a stem. You can go outside to good old mother nature and just grab a branch in the same size or thinner and cut them in little pieces too. If you want to do that, that would be just as good. And you can also use a wine cork. You can use a cinnamon stick or a bunch of cinnamon sticks together. I've seen people twist like the raffia up and make stems that way. The Spanish moss, I guess, technically could be twisted around something, but just be creative and have fun. And here comes a really fun part. I love to embellish my little pumpkins. So this is some stretchy lace. It kind of has a boing factor to it. It bounces back when you stretch it. But the Dollar Tree lace ribbon would be just as sweet, totally. So you could substitute that easily for this. I was going to use that. It's just I started using this, you know, I cut it open. So I thought, you know, I'm going to, I have a little theme going this year. And because these are supposed to be little primitive pumpkins, I'm going to keep it nice and simple. I'm just going to glue the little flower on top for an embellishment. And then, of course, the raffia. you got to have the raffia at fall time. And that's it. I just kind of trimmed the raffia up a little bit and we're good to go. And I think this came up so, so, so cute. So for this craft, you're just going to need anything round and some florals. For those of you that watch my videos, you might remember I've been cutting off little bits of floral pieces and garnish from this old candle um, centerpiece. And I realize the center of it is round. So even though it's broken there, I'm going to go ahead and tape it together and use this to make a little mini wreath. And 
And you really can use anything round. Be creative because by the time that you, you'll see what ends up happening, but by the time you glue everything down on this, it's going to end up being so, so sturdy. So you just need like a template, basically you know, a round template so that you can get your project going. So what I decide to use to reinforce this and make it really strong and give me a nice base to glue on is an old leftover mop thread. Like I have little, I did projects with some of the Dollar Tree mops and I have some of the threads left over. So I thought, oh, these will be perfect because they're kind of furry and they'll grab the hot glue and the flowers really well. And that way I can also save my twine because I use the twine more often and the nautical rope and the nautical rope is more expensive than the mop. So I'm always looking to save money and I always pass those tricks on to you guys. So you just go about wrapping up your entire thing with, it could even be old material. It can be anything. Just, you know, try to save your nautical rope since you're not going to see it unless you're, unless you, you know, you could do a different wreath here. You might end up just covering part of it. I'm planning on covering all of it. If you only cover part of it, maybe you'll want to use the nautical rope because you'll see it. If you're going to see nautical rope, it's definitely worth using, but if you're not going to see it, don't waste it. So the next thing I decide to do is take advantage of this nice foundation I have now that's like really, really, you know, adhesive and take some Spanish moss and just go about covering this a little bit too. So I'm just covering the entire piece because you'll see the back of it too. So I cover the front a little bit with the Spanish moss and the back a little bit. And because I didn't really want to give this guy a haircut because that would kind of undo everything I was trying to accomplish, I went ahead and took advantage of the Dollar Tree twine and I'm just tying it on there and I'm going to loosely wrap it around the wreath to help hold all the little wild, unruly little pieces of Spanish moss down. I just go about choosing some really festive fall colors from the Dollar Tree picks and I cut the little flowers off and I'm just going to go about decorating my wreath now. Then I choose to glue some rose hips down and I think the rose hips, I mean that's what my rose hips look like and they usually happen around this time of year so I'm pretty sure those are rose hips. but in person they look really fluorescent orange and kind of cheap and I know if I leave my rose hips on my rose bush for too long they'll get like a mold on them kind of or some kind of it's not a mold I think it's like a fungus something it looks whitish it gets like a whitish frost look on it but then it looks more real it adds more realism because these just they, I mean they might look okay on the film but in person they just look like cheap super fluorescent plastic orange and so I do tone those down a little bit and you'll see that in a minute. So I end up using my finger with a little white paint and just tapping it on to imitate the look of the like either fungus or mold that my rose bush gets outside. I have a wild rose I planted. It's absolutely gorgeous and hardy. Nothing kills that thing. It comes back healthy every year, but it's very prone to funguses. And a wild rose means it's one of the original roses that, you know, the early Romans wrote about before they did hybrids. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I don't spray my yard because there's hummingbirds and bees all around me and they regularly feed off of these things and they are struggling with pesticides and food. I mean, they just don't need it from the homes because I think they're running out of food and then what they can find is often tainted. So I have sprayed before. I try to use things that aren't toxic, <laughs> but and again, you just do your best. But anyway, I just thought this softened them up quite a bit and made them look a little bit more real. I added acorn tops on the top that I collected last year and I'm going to add a raffia bow. 
These colorful little wreaths like this are a great way to subtly add a pop of color to your tear tray without it being overpowering, and I love them for that reason. For this craft, you're going to need one of those little Dollar Tree wedding buckets. I'm using a chalkboard tag, decorative picks, and one of these little chalkboard signs. And I wrote, welcome to our patch in pencil first, just to make sure I got it right. And now I'm going over it with a white chalk pen. After that, I glue this sign onto the other chalkboard sign. I just thought that would make the back look really nice because on the tiered tray, you do have a 360 degree view where, you know, on my kitchen counter, cause it's on the corner. And then to cover that little hole at the top, I just made a little twine bow out of the Dollar Tree twine. And that's it. I made it nice and straight too. That's the trick. So it doesn't cover your words. And now I'm taking some of my antique wax. That's down below in my description box if you want to get the one that I use, but any antique wax will work. And I'm just sponging that on these white buckets. I do have to do about three coats to get it dark enough so it looks a little bit like a wood bucket. And I'm not being too, too picky here. I just want it to look more or less like a little wood bucket. And now I'm just taking a Dollar Tree pool noodle and I'm using it as a filler inside the bucket. You do have to make it really tight if you want your sign to stand sturdy. So I'm, I think I put three little pieces on top of each other and then one down the side. I'm like, stay, <laughs> it keeps wanting to move. But anyway, it works. And I stick the little, I just poke the sign down the center there. And then I take some raffia and I think I want this to look like hay. That's gonna look so good. And I cut it up. It takes me like 15 minutes to cut it up into little pieces. It's actually kind of funny. And I glue it down all over the top of this. But then I end up doing something different. Well, not different, I just add to it. Now I'm taking my cute little pumpkins off of their wooden sticks. This project was definitely a work in progress because I just kept upping the cute. <laughs> it's like upping my cute auntie. So I finally get them floating like they're on a little nest. I think, okay, that looks good. That's what I wanted. But then I thought, wait a minute, I live by pumpkin patches. And part of what makes them so cute when you drive by is seeing all those little bright orange circles. You know, you see all little, even if they're not bright, you see orange. So I didn't quite like the neutral color for that because I already had a lot of neutral on my tray. In other words, I, for me anyway, when I do my tiered tray, I do try to balance out the colors. So if I have a lot of neutral, I'll add a little splash of color here and there. So I just haphazardly kind of, you can see what I'm doing, I'm just tapping with my brush to tap on some orange color so it kind of looks like a see-through watercolor and I'm not worried about it being perfect it covers all of the pumpkin it's just the overall energy and I absolutely love the way this comes out
For this DIY, you're going to need one of these chargers from the Dollar Tree and one of these printables. Now that's a free printable I designed and it's down below in my description box below my video. You can click the link and it will take you right to it. And I'm using my Kills Primer again. I love the water-based Kills Primer. I have a lot of it and it tends to dry looking just like chalk paint. And of course it doesn't come off because it's primer. So I, I love using that and I'm just giving it one coat because I know that I want this to kind of look distressed and the center of it will be mostly covered. And now I'm taking some gray paint and I'm just lightly dry brushing around the edge to give it a little bit of a border. But the main border is going to be those little beads or bumps on the side of the charger. That's one of the features I love about the charger plates. And my Dollar Tree carries this all year round so they're easy to find. But I just dry brushed really lightly over those just to bring them out and try to leave the white behind so that you can see that they're little beads. You know, I didn't want to get it in the in between them too much I guess because then it would look like it was a solid design rather than individual little bumps <laughs> and you just saw me cutting out my printable that's actually a pumpkin seed printable from the graphicsfairy.com it's a free printable I downloaded it and then uploaded it into canva.com to add another background to it and create my own you know graphics and that's a really fun thing you can do so someone asked me how do you stop the ink from bleeding when you're mod podging you gotta wait at least one hour after you put something through your printer and preferably longer. I have better luck with three to four hours and of course if you can do it overnight and plan ahead that's even better. And then you use as little Mod Podge as possible. As you saw I just put a few drops down there just enough to get it to stick down and you dry it right away and that's your best kind of trifold attack I guess to try and prevent your ink from running. Once everything's dry you know most people want to seal it you use a clear varnish or a clear poly acrylic spray just something clear that doesn't yellow and you just mist it lightly with one spray let that dry and then do a second one really light let it dry and then you can go ahead and get really heavy handed with the Mod Podge if you want and you don't have to worry about your ink running because it's already protected and sealed in a thin layer of plastic. Now I have found I can stop after that spray. I'm perfectly happy. What I've been doing is just misting it once, then misting it twice and then my third spray is pretty heavy handed and sometimes I'll use a semi gloss if I want it to look a bit more like a Mod Podge finish and it's just easier obviously because you're spraying it's really fast you don't have to wash a brush after words or a sponge and that's another option it works fine all of my crafts have always held together but if you really want that thick plastic look then I would go to the Mod Podge so I glued some wood half beads around I think those are so pretty it just gave it that look I was going for I, I don't know what this look is I I love this look though I've seen it in other crafts and home decor in stores and I just love the color combos with the wood beads I just think it looks so pretty and I'm making what they call I think a messy bow and it's just scraps of, of like ribbon or fabric you literally just cut chop 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 any different lengths long medium small and you can finish the edges you don't have to finish the edges anything goes with these they're a lot of fun to make for that reason and they kind of drift I'm sorry, they kind of dress your craft up a little bit more without making them over fancy because sometimes the big bows, you know, even just a simple bow can make it look too fancy. I don't know if you, I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about, if you kind of want to stay in like a rustic look or downplay it a little bit, but it's too plain without a bow. These are great options. You just kind of fan them out. And when you have the ribbon without the wire, like I do with the lace ribbon, you can see what I'm doing. I'm just tacking it down with a little small drop of hot glue and that keeps it in that nice spray formation. And I left the top, I thought it was kind of cute because this is a fall craft. I kind of left the raffia there sprayed up like a pumpkin stem, even though this isn't really a pumpkin, it's a charger plate, but it gives it that feel, that vibe that's so cute for fall. And now I'm just adding some lamb's ear for some greenery and I'm using the wood glue still, the wood hot glue with this craft, so the glue's a little stronger. Although my other glue is good too, but this is definitely stronger because I am planning to put this outside on my front door. And this is something I've done for 20 years. I put hot glue down, some masking tape while it's hot so the masking tape melts and it kind of solders everything together and it holds up against the elements outside and I love this.
this craft, you're going to need some paper or material in your choice, some cardboard, and some Dollar Tree shapes, or you can print them up offline. Now, I would normally use Dollar Tree shapes, but my Dollar Tree, yes, for those of you that follow my channel, you know I have hole in the wall Dollar Trees. <laughs> I called and spoke to a very nice girl who told me they're not going to put the fall items out until next week, and they will be done putting it all out by the end of August. So for me, that's a little too little too late. <laughs> so I wanna show my international viewers how you can dupe the Dollar Tree stuff. You don't need a Dollar Tree. You just need some really good, thick, quality cardboard. You can see I'm having a hard time cutting that. I had to use scissors and blades. And you can easily print pumpkin shapes off from online and trace it and do exactly what I'm doing. So for the stem here, I had to make shift to stem. And because I'm using wood glue, this is going to hold together really good. Plus you're going to glue either paper or material on top of it so you don't have to worry. But until my Dollar Tree you know, puts out all of the fall things. I still wanted to show everybody this really neat DIY to give you guys additional inspiration. Of course, if you have a Dollar Tree that already has the fall stuff out, just go ahead and use the actual pumpkins. Or if you really, really wanna make it thrifty, you can use cardboard. Anytime I cover things with either really thick quality craft paper or material, I don't usually waste my wood or my Dollar Tree signs because I save those for projects where you really do need them. You know, they're, it's going to show and it's impossible to fake it, I guess. <laughs> Make it and fake it. But in this case, this DIY is going to be completely covered and the craft paper is thick. So when I glue it down, you're not going to see any of those lines. Now that's a concern with cardboard. If they have those little bumps and lines and grooves, you might like that actually. It can actually, you know, if you make them look like galvanized metal, it can go. But if you don't want those to show, you know, if you turn to tissue paper or napkins or anything thinner like a print, you will have to get either poster board and cut it and glue it on top so you have a smooth surface. Or, you know, like I said, you may not mind the lines. Pumpkin have those little lines. My pumpkins, at least in my pumpkin patches where they grow here, they have a lot of those little grooves and lines. So you might not mind that look. But if you do use the craft paper from a craft store, it's more than adequate to cover those lines, so don't worry about it. And of course, cloth is as well. So I'm just taking my craft paper. This paper is from Hobby Lobby, and I'm just cutting it out, as you can see, and matching up the little shapes and lines, and we're gonna make a really cute pumpkin formation. I absolutely love the Dollar Tree glue sticks for these kinds of crafts. You have to apply it very heavy, but you get a package of four for a dollar. So even if you used half a stick for one craft, you're still way ahead of the game. They're just so, so cheap. And they do work as long as you really use them heavy and thick and you can't miss any areas. So you can't just kind of rub it on there and then miss sections. You really do need to cover every part of the cardboard and rub it down but this gives a guaranteed no wrinkle, I guess, well, at least for me. Oh, I hope someone will come on and say, I did this with a napkin and it bubbled up. <laughs> if you put Mod Podge on top, you know, game's over. But if you do this and you just keep your glue really dry and, you know, you, so far I've never had anything bubble up for years. So I love glue sticks for that reason. They're a really great way to use to cover, especially for holiday crafts, because I make a lot of crafts. So a lot of these crafts only stay in my home just for this year. And then I'll either give them away or my family takes them. But I make so many that I have to recycle. So I, you know, for me, it's a great way to also to use your Amazon boxes or cardboard that you have sitting around. And Oh, isn't that cute, you guys? Look at that. I just love <laughs> these little formations. I've seen them from high-end stores, you know, and also just little craft stores where they sell these. And I just think they're so cute and I don't have one yet. So I wanted to go ahead and make one and I'm just covering them up and I'm just garnishing them with bows. So I do that bow that I decide I don't like that. This pumpkin is a lot heavier and bigger than the other two. So I wanted his bow to be a little bit heavier as well. And then kind of have that trickle down effect where the bows become, you know, less and then some weight at the bottom with other things besides the ribbon. So I'm also using an old, I'm not sure what that's called. It's for candles. They go in the center, but I found it at the 99 cent store years ago. 
and all of the little pumpkins are chipping off you know that's on there the little gourds you can see it they're a mess <laughs> and so it's turning out to be perfect just to pick apart and use as extra embellishment for my crafts and this is the magic trick here I'm taking my time and I'm using the twine from Walmart I love this twine at Walmart I think I bought it it was like maybe for something and I'm going on two years I have used so much and as you can see I've got so much left I don't know if this is ever going to run out it is a great deal so if you're at Walmart make sure you pick some of that up because it's much better quality than the Dollar Tree it's thicker and I think there's more for your money a lot more I'm showing you how I'm taking my time using a thin ribbon of glue and just gluing all the way around the edges. I do two rows on the bigger pumpkin because again I want him to be a little heavier. And I'm using the Hawaiian skirt from the Dollar Tree for the raffia. That's a leftover leaf right there, a maple leaf that was metal from a pumpkin that I used last year for a DIY. And I'm just putting little wrapped curly cube wire in there and just basically putting embellishments and decorating it but nobody's going to know this is cardboard unless they pick it up if you just have it on a front entry table a kitchen window at the bottom of a mantle thick cardboard is good enough and as long as the sides are covered it comes across so expensive and nice so i'm using an extra piece of lath you can use a paint stick for this part I painted it white and now I'm just taking those little wooden cubicle squares from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to create a little stand for this guy so he can stand on his own. I'll be putting him at the bottom of my ladder that's next to my mantle in my living room this year but he just came up so so cute and of course you don't need a Dollar Tree to make it. For this craft, you're going to need some leather strips and one of those little Dollar Tree round wooden discs. So I'm using some white acrylic paint and I'm just giving this a nice, soft, airy kind of dry brush, a little bit more than a dry brush, but not quite fully painted, just so you can see some of the leather colors through it. I didn't want it a solid white. And the texture on the back of the leather strap is a suede, so it gives it a really neat texture that's actually the one I choose to put on the outside of this craft because I love the texture it looks so good in real life it looks velvety really really pretty and I'm taking some hot glue and as you can see I'm just going to glue it down in this formation where the straps are side by side now you could do this with the Dollar Tree fake leather but you would need to double up on them so you know how the underside looks like cloth you would want to take the leather ribbon and glue it you know cloth side to cloth side so that they're both leather and that way they would be strong enough to hold this shape as well because we're making a little leather pumpkin you guys and it comes up so so cute Once you glue them all evenly down like that, you're just going to pull them up and glue them on top of each other evenly as well. So as you can imagine, the underside that I'm pinching right now is a little thicker and that part doesn't look good. But you, you know, I'm going to easily cover it because I had planned on putting a big pretty floral bow on top of it. But this is what it should look like when you're all done. And it's so fun making pumpkins out of everything nowadays. Have you guys noticed that that's on trend? Everybody's making it out of everything you can think of. I just think it's such a fun trend. So I'm making a leather one. And as you can see, I tried some raffia because I thought, oh, that would cover it. Then I thought, maybe a stem. And no. <laughs> so I end up settling on this. This is some ticking stripe ribbon and some lace ribbon that a lovely subscriber sent me. She sent me about three boxes 
and I think another one's on the way. Thank you so much. You know who you are. She won't let me say her name, but I just have so much wonderful stuff to craft with so I don't know where she got the lace ribbon but when I take it out I am pleasantly surprised to discover it's like an elastic stretch ribbon so it kind of goes boing you know <laughs> when you pull it so it gives it this really neat textured look you'll see it when I'm all done when it lays on top of this pumpkin it gives a really neat textured look because it kind of springs back and wrinkles and crinkles it's really really cute and that ends up being more than enough you'll see me pulling it between the little leather straps there to cover and you know drape it down and cover the thicker part at the top of the pumpkin that I don't want visible and you could easily use the Dollar Tree lace ribbon for this I actually thought she did send me a roll of the Dollar Tree lace ribbon because she has sent me a few of those and so I was surprised because when I took the plastic off and then took a closer look, I thought, oh, <laughs> that's different. Super cute. And I'm making a little floral bow out of the ticking stripe ribbon. There's lots of videos on YouTube. If you just put DIY floral bow, it'll show you how to make this. You loop it around and around and you cut the center little cuts on either side. Sometimes it's a triangle, but when it's really small ribbon like this, I usually don't bother with the triangle because I'm afraid I'll cut through the ribbon. But when you're pulling the loops out, you pull them in opposite directions directions and you kind of twist them as you're doing it to help it spray out like in a flower and it just helps a little bit but the cloth ribbon never wants to totally spray out like a flower so I did have to work with it and tack it down here and there with some hot glue but this is what we have so far and then for the top I just decided to go ahead and use a little wooden half bead I thought why not I did it for my first DIY it was laying on the side by me and I thought this would be totally cute it would be like a little button but the energy that this little pumpkin had when I was all done was very vintage it almost reminded me of like a steampunk vintage little pumpkin. I don't know, but it came up so, so cute. For this craft, you're going to need the foam dice from the Dollar Tree, a piece of wood, I'm using the plank from the Dollar Tree, and some letter stickers of your choice. Now I'm using Craft Smart Acrylic White paint for this. I love that paint in white. It is so similar in coverage to a chalk paint. In fact, I think it performs the same. I do have to dry these thoroughly, and they dry really quick it's a nice material to paint on for that reason it's very porous and it soaks up the paint and dries really quick and I do have to do a second coat in order to cover it enough that you can't see those little dots through anymore and then I'm taking the color it's an orange color called pumpkin <laughs> it's actually called pumpkin and I'm just sponging it on nice and light now it's a little brighter than I wanted I would have liked a softer orange but that was all I had and I knew by the time I distressed this and dry brushed it, it wasn't really going to be that much of an issue anyway. So now I'm using my favorite color and I hope they still sell this. I saw it online. I don't know if it's some overstock thing, but it's Country Tan by Apple Barrel. They don't carry it in my Walmart. I have yet to go into an actual craft store and look for it, and hopefully you can buy it online. But I love that color for light distressing that paint I think I've had it for like 15 years it's still going strong because I really only use it for light distressing but it has a really unique mocha color that is not available in any other color in the Apple Barrel line or the Craft Smart paint that I know of now there is a color by Waverly paint that has that color but someone told me they're stopping making Waverly I hope someone in the comments told me if that's true they've discontinued Waverly paint because I thought oh no that's going to upset a lot of crafters. I don't know if that was just discontinued at Walmart or if they're just discontinuing Waverly. But if you can't find the Country Tan and Apple Barrel paint, you could use the brown color and you'll recognize it right away when you see it in the Waverly chalk paint. It would give you the exact same finish. And I just go over it with a little bit of white paint and then orange again and then white paint. I'm just 
you know those little foam blocks you saw me put the country tan on then I took a little white trying to soften up the orange and it ended up making it look almost reddish so then I went back over it with orange but that's how I got the final look and now I'm just using the antiquing wax most of them come in brown and I did see one in gray once but most of them come in brown so any antiquing wax will work you just use it to stain the wood and you can leave the wood raw if you want or you can paint it white and then I use the little stickers to spell out the word fall. Now, as you can see, I have them set up this way with the F and the L next to each other and the A and the L next to each other. And I actually stressed about this, you guys. I went downstairs to get something to eat and I kid you not, I think it took me three hours to make a final decision here, but I do end up moving the L's on the bottom and the F A on the top. Let me know which way you like it better. But I think because it was coming up way cuter than what I had envisioned, I really wanted it to be perfect and it just felt more balanced with the L's at the bottom. So as you can see, I took some more of that country tan paint and I just dry brushed the letters a little bit because I wanted them to blend in. They were popping a little bit too loud for my taste. And I'm gluing the little foam blocks together. Now that's important if you make this craft. Make sure you glue the blocks together in sets of two first because you see what I'm holding up there? That is a wine cork I had to slice super wafer thin because I did have to add it to one side so that they're not lopsided because the little cubes are not made perfectly uniform. You can't see it at all because it's a foam material and it kind of squishes over everything. So I'm pretty sure even a penny would work if you don't have a cork. But if you run into that problem, you can fix it. And then of course I glued those two cubes down on top of each other. And now I'm using the little wood piece from the Dollar Tree. I'm pretty sure these are like little miniature birch wood pieces. Birch wood is really popular and I always wonder what they do with the smaller stems. And I think they're selling them off to the Dollar Tree because if you stay those little wood pieces up close, they have the same little notches, like the little marks. If you guys watch my video on how to DIY your own birch wood, you can see that I took pencil and made those little lines and these little stems actually have that so I'm pretty sure they're birchwood. I could be wrong but I'm pretty sure you know because it's still popular and they look really really cute. It's a great idea to sell off the little pieces that way you don't waste the wood and people can use them for crafts or for filling in a floral vase. I think it's a great idea. And so I made a bow out of raffia. I'm just adding that on the side and now I'm taking some more of the gingham print in black and white from the Dollar Tree and I made a little bow with that. And that's it. I'm gonna glue him down on top of this stand. And I think he came up so, so cute. Let me know what you think. But this is one of those crafts, I was making it and I wasn't really sure how it was gonna turn out. And again, it was one of those, you know, where my husband saw it and went, ooh, it just came up so, so unexpectedly cute. This DIY you're going to need a Dollar Tree pumpkin and one of these cookie baking trays and I'm just going to take the pumpkin and trace out the tray. This is a really easy way to give your cheap little pumpkin from the Dollar Tree a quick facelift. I love working with their baking trays. They give an instant metal look and I love the bumpy texture. I think that's a cool look. And here I'm wearing gloves. You can see I'm cutting off the stiff edge and that kind of ensures that you won't get cut. But if you watch what I'm doing, the minute I start going around and that edge is bending towards my hand, I cut it off and let it fall. And that's the safest way that you can cut these trays so that you don't get cut is by getting the stiff edge off. And then when you cut, bending the piece. If you're right-handed, it would be the piece on the outer 
right hand side you can see it right there it's starting to bend on the outer right hand side if you keep going up the edges of that risk cutting your skin so see how i just clipped it away that's the safe way to cut these i have never gotten cut yet and i do wear gloves just to be careful but it sure is worth taking your time to cut them out because they really do add a higher end to a cheap pumpkin from a dollar store now for those of you that don't live by a dollar tree or don't have good Dollar Trees, or you don't have Dollar Trees that have their fall items out just yet, you can easily substitute cardboard for this. I would just suggest cutting the foil baking pan bigger so you can bend it over the edge of that cardboard and then covering the back of your little pumpkin with brown paper, felt, just something to make sure you don't get cut on the edges of the foil because it'll be harder just with cardboard it's harder to get those edges you know if you put the twine on the edge of the cardboard it doesn't quite protect you from the edges of the foil I've just I don't know why but I found that it just doesn't work quite as well so here you saw me use hot glue and now you see me using my glove to press it down the metal does conduct heat so be careful you don't get burned you are going to need some kind of heating pad or glove to press that down and here I'm taking scissors, I'm cutting the edges of the foil off so that what I just talked about doesn't happen, I won't get cut. I even use a blade, which I don't bother showing on film, to go really close to the edge and I wear magnifying glasses that you can get from the Dollar Tree just to make sure I don't miss any edge because when I pick this up, I don't want to accidentally get cut and I don't want anyone else to either. So now I'm using the color Country Gray by Apple Barrel and I'm just going to sponge it all over the front of the foil to hide that it's foil. This method is going to leave behind just enough shine and sparkle to give way that it is a metal piece you know for the naked eye if someone looks at it they'll register that it's a metal piece but without it leaving too much shine behind because i think you know the cookie trays are a wonderful trick to have a metal a faux metal piece like you got got it from a craft store and if by the way if you do decide to do cardboard you could glue three cardboard pumpkins together and really bend it over the edge to make it look like a super thick metal pumpkin that would also be super cute but it it's you do have to cover the shine a little bit whatever color you want to use you don't have to use gray I like using gray you don't have to you could do it a different color because they do have painted metal in the craft stores but you definitely have to tone that shine down so now I'm doing the little curvatures and I left this part in, I'm wiping it, you see that? I just turn my sponge sideways and wipe it away. And I left this on purpose so you can see how easy it is to make corrections. Now that gray paint was already dry, so you do have to spray a little bit of a clear varnish over this craft piece when you're done. You could use hairspray for this particular piece, that would be fine. But I just keep working with it until I get curvatures I'm happy with. You could always do a pattern if you want. I did it freehand, so I did have to make some adjustments, but I wanted to show you how easy it was to make those adjustments. Now I'm making a messy bow and the ribbon I'm holding right now, the buffalo plaid and that red striped, you know, ticking stripe one that I was holding before, both of those come from other places. The buffalo check comes from Amazon and the ticking stripe one came from Etsy. They're all sold out on Etsy. The buffalo check, I believe, is in a link down below in my description box if you're interested in that one. And the rest are Dollar Tree ribbons, and you just cut them all in different pieces, you tie them together, and voila, you have a messy bow. And I absolutely love this look for autumn. I don't know why, but I'm really into the messy bows right now. I think they are so cute looking. And I took the leaf off of this pumpkin, turned it around. I also gave it some dimension with the nutmeg color. And I'm taking that burlap leaf, which is also from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna glue it behind there and I'm just doing embellishments. But if you're into farmhouse neutral, this is such a perfect craft piece. It looks so, so cute. And of course, last but not least, a raffia bow. I love raffia at fall time. And I just think this came up so, so cute.
This is my inspiration piece. I saw it on Pinterest and I just think it's such a cute idea. I'm going to make it using shims. You could use paint sticks or whatever you want. And I'm starting off by using some black paint and painting my shims. You could also use a dark charcoal gray if you wanted to do that route. And I'm gonna take and dry brush some white paint over it. Now, my camera turned off when I was dry brushing and when I glued the frame together and it was driving me nuts. I I didn't have the plug anyway well, sorry about that but dry brushing for those of you that don't know is where you just put a tiny bit of paint on your brush it would be white paint in this instance and I dab it a little bit on a paper towel and then gently sweep it over the wood until you come up with this look here which kind of imitates an old barn wood look and that's it and so I'm using some Dollar Tree florals now I'm cutting them up this piece here came from the Goodwill it was just these big floral pieces. I don't know what they were, but they were only 50 cents and I knew I could cut them up and use them for crafting. And I'm just wrapping a piece of it together using some of the hula skirt raffia from the Dollar Tree. And we're going to go about decorating this frame just like what we saw. And I'm also going to do a messy bow again. I love them. You're going to see a lot of them. I think they're such a cute trend. They're so fun to make. I think I like them because it allows you to put so many different ribbons in the bow. Whereas when you do a regular bow, it's harder to get all those variations. I mean, you could loop a bunch of ribbon together, but you would waste a lot of ribbon to get the same vibe, I guess. And so that's not very cost effective. And they also look very dressy. You know, if you go too big with those and use too much ribbon, you can almost look like a wedding bouquet. So these are just a really fun trend. I'm really enjoying. They're not overly dressy. They kind of keep that look of, you know, if you want to go a little rustic, especially with fall, even if you don't do farmhouse, fall kind of lends itself to farmhouse just because of the pumpkin patches and the hay rides. <laughs> a lot of the decor kind of revolves around that theme. So these are just, in my opinion, a perfect bow for that. So I'm also going to take some raffia. I always try to add a little bit of that in with every fall craft because I think it gives it that edge that really signals it's an autumn craft. And I'm taking a mop thread. That's just a Dollar Tree mop thread there to tie this bow together. And that's it. When you're done tying it together, you just fluff these bows out and kind of twist them and make them so you can see me doing it here. Just kind of, you know, play with them a little bit until you get them spread out so all the pretty little different ribbons show. And you can also do this with material too. I think that would look really pretty if you wanted one that was kind of frayed. That would look really cute. And I'm taking some ribbon now, twisting it at the top so that it doesn't hang over the edge. So I'm able to hot glue it where I want it on the top. And that's it. I'm going to glue the bow down, the florals down, and we're going to end up with a super pretty decor piece that you can either hang on the front door which you saw in the photo on Pinterest in my home it's hung in a window that I made from an old picture I caught at the Goodwill I actually just grabbed a picture I think it was about $11 got some wood from Home Depot and used some glue to glue it on like a window and that was my you're gonna see it when it comes up in the finale but my window was really simple to make and it's super heavy and people think it's a real window so that was kind of a neat thing I wanted to share with you and at the very end I'm gonna glue some raffia on the top too to hang it I just thought it would be kind of different to glue it in the front and then have that extra accent because the frame was very plain rather than glue it behind. I usually put twine or something behind things to hang it, but in this instant, instance, I wanted the raffia in the front. And now I'm taking some leftover shims and I'm cutting them kind of roughly with a wire cutter there. And I'm just breaking them so that they look like an old little farmhouse sign. And I'm using this antique wax. You can use any brand of antique wax you want for this. You can use a water-based stain that I often talk about it. it's an acrylic one also down below in my description box it's odorless that would work great for this too and I'm just gonna make this a little bit you know dirty the well not dirty a little stained <laughs> and because it went a little darker than I wanted and because the wax is kind of more greasy and oily I was able to take a baby wipe and blend it in and wipe it off so it, it became a little bit lighter which was nice this is why I kind of stared away from the water-based stain because I knew it would soak in like crazy and then you can't do anything after that but dry brush a lighter color on top so I went with the wax and I write happy fall, glue it down, and that's it. I'm gluing the top raffia on that I mentioned earlier. 
and I think this again came up so so cute and it's super easy to do anyone can make this DIY Here's my inspiration piece it's $6.99 online and I thought we can make this a lot cheaper here's a Dollar Tree mason jar and this year's calendar it's a 2021 calendar and I've been saving it for this print right here because I knew I wanted to use it for fall you can use any print you want and if you google free autumn prints so many blogs come on and they have absolutely gorgeous prints that they offer for free they want you to go to their blog obviously but look around online and find a print that you really like because it's easy to do they're very generous i noticed at the holidays so for autumn and even christmas there's so many free printables out there for you now you see me using the super thick cardboard again for this craft my dollar tree has not put out these mason jars yet i went and i was so excited they had some fall stuff out and i bought what i could but the girl told me again they're going to take about two weeks to put it all out so it will all be out at the end of august so i have a couple of ideas with this mason jar and i didn't want to use the original for that and i always like to show you how you can do it cheaper too now here's the glue stick from the dollar tree i love this glue stick you have to apply it really really heavily but it stops your print especially if you're using thin paper it stops it from wrinkling up and buckling up when you glue it down whereas Mod Podge is very wet and that's one of the struggles and complaints with people when they put it down that it will bubble up and wrinkle when you don't want it to sometimes that's good if you're putting on wood that buckling actually looks really neat if you sand afterwards it kind of creates a raised area that naturally rubs off when you're sanding and looks really nice and distressed so here i left this part in on purpose because it kind of gave a nice view of how much glue you have to use when i say use a lot and be generous for up until now the camera hasn't really caught that well and i noticed it caught it really well when i was doing this craft you can really see that white glaze on top with the cardboard you really have to cover everything but the glue stick works wonderfully i'm just going around now and trimming because i am going to be covering the edges with some twine and this is some burlap i got from walmart it was cheap i think it was for something a yard and i got half a yard but it's been in half so it's been lasting me now two years so not a bad price and I'm just gonna glue it on the back. I did fray it a little bit on the bottom just so it has that nice frayed look. And I don't know if, you're, you're gonna see here in a minute, there, can you see the lines from the cardboard? You Usually I talk about if you wanna get rid of those, use poster board or something on top of your cardboard. But with this particular craft, I wanted those lines to show through because I want this to look kind of like a white metal pitcher and just give that illusion i guess now i do seal this with clear varnish you could seal it with hairspray if you're not going to use it again or if it's not a keepsake craft that you're going to keep a long time the problem with hairspray and why i didn't suggest it before i have suggested it in previous videos but what i discovered is after about three years my craft underneath the Mod Podge had all yellow veins through it so I think it was a hairspray that yellowed and unless you know your hairspray doesn't yellow or if you know you recycle your crafts a lot and you're just not going to keep them that long so it's not important I don't recommend hairspray anymore I usually just recommend the clear polyacrylic or the clear varnish in matte just mist it and that way you don't have to worry about that Now, of course, if you have a Dollar Tree sign, go ahead and use the actual sign. Whether you use cardboard or the sign, if you're planning on putting it outside like I am, I do get wind where I live, so I'm still going to need to weight it down a little bit, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to glue either paint sticks on the back or a rock or something or both to hold it down. And for this, you could actually use the free paint sticks because nobody's going to see the back. 
and I'm using a button there from a cloth chocolate box that I upcycled on a previous video. I'm going to turn it over on the light side where there's some beautiful grain and it pops really pretty and put it in the center there. I think that's a nice accent piece. But another trick too is if your cardboard is warping, let's say you only have thin cardboard, just cut out about two or three of them and glue them together and cover your craft that way. You know, that way you won't have the buckling. Let's say you don't have free paint sticks and you don't have craft sticks and you are needing to still make this look nice and heavy and not have it buckle or warp. That's another trick. You just use multiple layers of cardboard because cardboard obviously is a form of wood and it gets thicker and thicker with the more that you put together but this is the final result For this craft, you're going to need a Dollar Tree vase. You can also use a jar, like a mayonnaise jar or a mason jar, and you're going to need some fall leaves and some Mod Podge. Now this is going on all over online Pinterest. If you just Google fall jars, these come up in abundance. So if you want to take a look and see what I'm trying to accomplish here. I chose this old floral piece here that I've shown before. And I'm using the leaves from it because they're kind of, they've got those nice mellow brown ones, which I'm after, and then some bright ones here and there. And I'm taking and removing the middle plastic piece, the, I guess the branch there. Really simple to do. It just came right off. And of course, I'm using the hair dryer trick to remove the sticker here. Now, you're always wiser in hindsight when you do these crafts. So here's what, I, this is my first time doing this kind of craft, and this is the tips that I want to share with you if you try to recreate this because it came up absolutely gorgeous. Use leaves that are very pliable and bendable and easy that take shape. So a better choice would have been cloth or a napkin, a fall napkin with leaves, or you can find these silk leaves that aren't so stiff. I didn't think about it when I was cutting them. Mine are very, very thick and stiff. They're high quality. So that made it very, very difficult to get them to stay flat. In the end, you'll see I actually put a blow dryer up and I have to glue them down while I'm drying and kind of tap with my finger. And it all works out fine, but it was very difficult. Another idea too, is you could find some fall leaves and print them up on tissue paper and apply, apply it that way, the tissue paper. And you would, you know, just anything that bends, don't use stiff leaves because here I am right here with the dryer. I'm pressing with my sponge and drying at the same time to get the glue to be dry enough to hold the leaf down. So I don't keep lifting, you know, it doesn't keep lifting while I'm moving and doing my craft. Now I do end up Mod Podging the whole thing because that's what the little blog said to do that I went to. And this is the next morning and I don't like that. Maybe it would have dried more if I had left it because that it's possible since those were thicker lines that that is still mildly wet under there. Sometimes Mod Podge can take a few days to dry, but I just didn't like it. So I, mean, I missed the crystal clear look of the vase. It, you know, you now another thing you can do too, is you can, um, well, you can do what I'm doing, but I'm showing you how easy it is to remove this. I've talked about Mod Podge being a layer of plastic, and this is really going to show you exactly how and why it really is a layer of plastic. I don't think people realize it's truly a layer of plastic. And it just comes right off. I take that Dollar Tree, that's a Dollar Tree blade right there. I stuck it in another holder, but that's from the Dollar Tree. It's their little craft knife. And I just go around and cut all around the leaves on this entire vase. It doesn't take long. It's actually kind of fascinating. I was enjoying it. And I peel all that excess off. Then I take a baby wipe and kind of wipe anything that's left over. And I end up, for me, with a much prettier result. I could have taken it outside and sprayed a clear varnish on it because that also gives it kind of that frosted glass look. But I just wanted to stop here. I wanted my glass to be really crystal clear I guess I only wanted the leaves and the surrounding area of the leaves to have that kind of foggy dreamy look I didn't want the rest of the vase 
to do that. Maybe if it had been a jar, I would have, because jars, you know, they're kind of a little more rustic, the mason jars, but for the vase, I wanted it to be just see-through glass. So totally personal preference. You guys can do it however you like. And I'm using some raffia here, keeping it simple. I just want a little bit of raffia tied on the top. And that's it. This is a really stunning craft when it's done, especially in the evening. I encourage you guys to try it. Just remember to use leaves that are easier, you know, think we're going around the bends and the corners and they're easier to lay down on a curvature. And I'm using some fairy lights and that's it. It came up beautiful. For this craft you're going to need a Dollar Tree pumpkin. Some of these little signs from the summertime or you could use these signs but they don't have arrows on them. I'm after the pole in the middle there that wouldn't stick and I'm just removing the staples on the back of the other little arrow signs. I'm gonna rip the signs off of that stick because I want this stick for something else and the first thing I'm going to do is use my homemade chalk paint to paint my pumpkin white. If you're interested in seeing how I made this, it's actually my new video on chalk paint that I made during the summer. It's titled Three New Ways of Making Chalk Paint. You can check it out there. I used number three to make that recipe. I really like it. It covers really, really well. It's amazing. And now I'm just going to give it a coat of the paint in Antique White by Apple Barrel. It's kind of like a cream color with a little bit of yellowish, I guess. It's a little more yellow than I wish it was, but it's a very pretty color. And I'm going to paint all three of these signs with the Antique White. And for those of you that noticed, right before I painted these, I was sanding down the little holes from the tacks that I pulled out. That sanding and roughening up the surface in those areas turns out to make really good texture for dimension when we go to stain these. So if you want to add a little more sanding here and there, the stain kind of grabs where I sanded and makes it look even better so for the look we're going for so I choose white for the stick because I want a bit of contrast between the signs and the stick and now we're going to take an antique wax you can use any brand of antique wax you want if you're interested in the one I'm using it's down below in my description box and I'm taking a blush brush yes that's a blush brush I love staining with that sometimes because it's a very soft fluffy kind of airy surface and when you kind of want to float your brush over your craft it works really really well for that and then just to spread that out to make sure that all the areas are covered I'm using a baby wipe to wipe my fingers as well but <laughs> that's how I get it to kind of stain all over and you know you get that look so I'm doing the same thing with a baby wipe now and some orange paint. This orange paint is actually the Dollar Tree orange paint I just don't like the way the Dollar Tree paints come the acrylic paints come in the squeeze bottle because if I accidentally squeeze out too much I can't get it back in the bottle so I just used an old orange paint container rinsed it out and filled it up again with the Dollar Tree paint but it ends up being a really pretty orange and to make my little designs on my pumpkin this time I use a bigger Dollar Tree pumpkin to trace that and use it like a template and now I'm taking a little bit of the burnt umber from apple barrel paint I just took a baby wipe again I smeared it over the orange now the orange was dry I dried it with a blow dryer first and I'm edging the pumpkin now just giving it a little bit of a border and I'm taking my sponge I'm showing you here I'm just going to use the edge of that sponge to make those lines stand out that I drew with pencil ahead of time right there and we're just going about the process of distressing and aging this pumpkin and making it look like those 
those wooden pumpkins you see on Pinterest when you look at rustic wooden pumpkins. <laughs> they always kind of have this look here where the orange is kind of smeared. That's the way you get it. Ladies and gents, you just smear your orange on and then you smear some brown paint or stain over it. And then after I do that line, I decide it's a little too harsh. So I'm just taking the sponge and kind of smearing it and softening it and blurring it a little bit so that it blends with the rest of the look of the pumpkin. And now I'm using some of the Dollar Tree twine. I just wrapped it around my fingers to make a simple bow. This is a very rustic piece, so I'm making it it's very simple. Less is more with this one for sure. And I turned it sideways to hide the hole on the top. That was a little trick I did. So if you guys don't feel like using a wood filler and filling that little hole at the top of the pumpkin, just make a bow and turn it sideways. And then I'm gonna go ahead and write three phrases on each of these arrow sticks. We're going to the pumpkin patch day, you guys. So there's hot cider, there's pumpkins, and there's hay rides. And I purposely use a brush to paint it because if you use a paint pen, you're gonna get a really clean, crisp look. If you want that, that's fine. Do what, do what makes you happy. But I wanted it to look really homemade, like a farm, you know, like somebody's kid on a farm made the sign for them when they were having their little, I live by pumpkin patches and the signs usually are hand painted like this kind of roughly with a brush. So that's the look I was going for. You can do it either way. And now I'm using dunnage blocks. These are free pieces of wood you can get from Home Depot. They throw them away. Some managers are nice about it. They give it to you. Some don't but they are great for crafts. I'm using it for a stand and they have a natural rustic look to them. They are the pieces of wood that the straps go around to bring in the big, huge plywood that Home Depot brings in. So they throw those away usually. And like you can see, they're great for crafting. So I just reinforce it with some extra hot glue, glue the pumpkin on the front, and this is what we end up with. <laughs> For this craft, you're going to need a Dollar Tree wreath form, a family sign or a sign of your choice, and some ribbon of your choice. I'm going to be using the buffalo check ribbon I have here, and this is really easy. You're just going to wrap up your wreath form with your ribbon. So you start off with gluing the beginning, and you wrap it up, and you only need to glue the very end. And I always get a lot of questions about that pink spatula. That is a makeup spatula, and you can find it in the makeup section at Dollar Tree. You can find it at Walmart, and you can find it also on Amazon. I have a link down below in my description box. Most of my supplies, if not all of the ones I use in videos, I try to put down in my description box. And if you're wondering how to find the description box on a computer, you click see more and a drop down menu will appear and you'll see all this information, products that channels use, links to the ones they're using so you can find it if you want the same product. And if you're on a phone or a tablet, like a cell phone or tablet, there's gonna be a little gray arrow in the upper right hand corner. Just tap that and the same thing will happen. A drop down menu will appear and that's how you find your description box. I also get a lot of questions about that as well. So I'm just taking Dollar Tree florals and decorating this wreath right now. I had some real acorns from last year that I glued and I used that craft just for last year. So I went ahead and took the acorn little piece off to use for this craft, used some of the Dollar Tree hula skirt for the raffia and made like a rough kind of messy bow, I guess, with that. And that's what we have with the wreath so far. 
and I'm starting with painting the family sign white. So make sure you allow enough time for these two. There's a lot of nooks and crannies on these signs. I love them, but they do take time to paint and it's easy to miss spots. So when that's all dry, I take a black painter pen and I'm just doing little stitching around the edges. And this is for the sole purpose of making it stand out more so people can see what the word is. I also think it's just cute to mention. And it goes with the buffalo check ribbon nicely. I hot glue it on the front of this piece. I also hot glue some twine on the back so we can hang this, but this turns out to be a really pretty festive seasonal decor piece and it's perfect for Thanksgiving and autumn. For this piece, you're going to need a Dollar Tree little wooden acorn and some potpourri, some potpourri of your choice, preferably the color brown. Now I got lucky here when I picked this piece on purpose because it had that natural wood grain going through the center and I thought, oh my gosh, that would be so, so pretty to work with because I love wood. I love wood grain. I That's why I hate covering the wood pieces from the Dollar Tree if they're all wood with just paper or things like that I usually switch to cardboard because the whole purpose at least for me to get the wood is to get that pretty wood look so I try to preserve it whenever I can so I'm using the color in country tan from apple barrel and the other color is territorial beige in apple barrel paint and I'm showing you how I'm just swirling it next to that grain. I didn't touch the grain to create additional grain and dimension. So if you can't find a piece with that grain look, you can also just do it with different colors of brown paint. And now I'm taking the potpourri, I put it in a plastic bag and I took it and put it on the floor to hammer it because I'm on a tile there. I will it's a porcelain tile, so I will absolutely crush my tile if I try to hammer on there. But, it turns out the potpourri is kind of soft, so it doesn't really break it up that much anyway. It just kind of makes it more bendable and pliable, which is good. I mean, it makes it easier to glue on. But I want to do a shout out for another YouTuber because I saw this last year from Justin Ray. And I will put his description or his link down in the description box. I thought it was such a cute idea. I'm doing it a little bit different, but I just thought that was such a cute idea for the top of an acorn. It just has that perfect kind of bumpy rough look. And this is a Dollar Tree potpourri, which usually when I use it, the fragrance goes away in a couple weeks. So I'm actually just storing it in another room with all my other craft supplies for fall because I haven't decorated my house quite yet. And I'm going to go ahead and use some cinnamon essential oil to put on this because I prefer that kind of smell, but it's a great way to get like a hidden air freshener in your home. And of course the essential oils are a lot healthier to breathe in. In fact, if you Google essential oils, providing that you get good quality ones, they have a lot of health benefits if you choose wisely. So this can be a very multi-purpose craft. <laughs> you can hang it in your house. And I guess when you breathe in certain oils, the fragrance gets into your bloodstream, into your cells. It can improve your, you know, boost your immune system and improve your mood all kinds of things really interesting so that's a nice little tip and now I'm just taking some wire cutters I'm trimming around the edge just so this takes the shape of the acorn and I don't know why my camera went blurry here I didn't put anything close to it it just decided to go a little blurry but it's no big deal because I'm just taking burnt umber from apple barrel paint and giving it a border and then for those of you that shop at the Dollar Tree and are familiar with these wood pieces you know they are feather light so I'm just using the Dollar Tree twine here and I'm putting a little hanger on the back in case I want to hang it. I think I'm going to put this on my mantle and lean it up against the wall, but I just wanted to have that option. And that's it. Look at how cute this came out.
For this craft, you're going to need one of these Dollar Tree plastic trays and one of the Dollar Tree metal signs. They come in different choices, so if you can't find that one, look for another one. You can even break or cut them off of the stakes. Sometimes they're attached to a metal stake. You know, go ahead and get that if that's all you can find. And I did a light sanding on top, very, very light sanding on top of that tray. Don't go too hard or it will peel. Just to rough it up a little bit, and then I spray painted it with the paint and primer I showed you. And it's outside right now drying. So while it's drying, I decide to try and sand off the glitter on this little wagon. This is probably the cutest thing I've ever found at the Dollar Tree. But when I was sanding, it was just removing the paint and really not the glitter. So I decided to go ahead and paint with the glitter and just kind of upgrade the colors to a more modern look, you know, what's trending right now. Cause I thought the colors were kind of strange. We don't have blue or burgundy pumpkins. So, <laughs> and it turns out the glitter was a blessing in disguise because it gives it like a speckled texture look. You'll see at the very end in the final reveal, it adds to the look in a really nice way. So don't hesitate to paint over the glitter. And as a side note, be careful not to soak your signs and then rinse your glitter down the faucet, toilet, or down in the gutter because that does go to our oceans. And there was an article two years ago that the glitter is killing our sea life. It's floating around the oceans. It's obviously difficult for them to breathe with millions of plastic particles. So do what you can. That's all you can do. But try and throw it in your trash can in a plastic bag so that it can stay in the landfills. So now I'm just taking some of the burnt umber and I'm just painting the little lines where they were before and I'm using more of the antique wax. I'm just going to stain it up and give it shadows and dimension and make it look like the piece was originally but just different colors. And that's what we have so far. And I'm using a red paint. I believe this paint is a multi, it is, it is a multi-purpose paint by Craftsmart. So it's made to go on all different surfaces and I got fire truck red. And then I take a white paint pen and go over the letters just to cover up any areas where I kind of went over with the red paint a little bit and just to make them pop a little bit more because you know, I did go over the edge, so some of the letters were looking deformed because <laughs> they had red paint over them. And the white paint pen works perfect for this. So the colors I used for the pumpkins was a paint called Joanne Craft Essentials in Leaf Green for the green pumpkin. The other one is the Apple Barrel paint in the Antique Parchment. And lastly, I just take some black acrylic paint and paint the wheels. You don't have to have a multi-purpose paint either. You can always seal it with a clear varnish. I missed it at the very end when the whole craft piece is together. I missed the whole thing outside with a clear varnish and that's fine. So I'm just using whatever I could find around my craft room to make some straight lines there because my ruler was too long to fit in that little oval shape. But we're just making some faux ship lap. And now I'm using some of this water-based acrylic stain. I love this stuff. It's just I, I kind of float between the antique wax and this because they definitely have different purposes. This has an amazing glide factor when you're working with a shiny surface. It glides really, really easy, probably because it's a water-based, you know, stain. Another really good thing about it is it's odorless. So if you're sensitive to odors, both the wax and this water-based acrylic stain are odorless, which for me makes it more enjoyable when you're crafting because everything's right under your nose. So <laughs> it's always nice when it's not gassing you to death. And I'm just taking a baby wipe again, kind of smearing it. And I dabbed the edges because I wanted that to stand out more like it was a frame on this. We're kind of doing a faux wood piece here. And if you're interested in the water-based stain, it is down below with my supplies. There's a link to Amazon to show you the one that I bought and it will take you straight to it. So for this piece, I did need some stronger adhesive. So I'm using the Fix All by Superglue. However, this, I didn't feel confident with it. So even though I use a Fix All, I do go back and use some super glue too and I didn't show it on camera. So I use super glue for a permanent hold and hot glue just for that instant hold so that it can dry. And I do lay a heavy book on top of it overnight to let it dry. This is the next day. 
and I'm just taking some of the Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree, gluing it at the bottom because I thought that was so, so cute. This piece was one of those pieces I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out and it ends up being one of my favorite in this video. This is going to be in the middle of my mantle. This is kind of like my statement piece this year because in real life it's 3D, you can tell it's metal. It just looks so, so high end and cute. I absolutely love the way this craft came out. So now I'm taking just a regular old pencil and scribbling out those ship lines that kind of disappeared, the shiplap lines. That's all you need to do. It doesn't need to be anything fancy and that's it. This is what we end up with. For this DIY, you're going to need a Dollar Tree maple leaf and a stain of your choice. I'm using this water-based acrylic stain. It's down below in my description box. There's a link that will take you to it on the Amazon store. I like this very much because it has no odor. I'm in a small room crafting and try my best to try and avoid noxious fumes. I hope I used the right word, noxious fumes, but <laughs> this has no odor. So for me, it's really appealing. And I did add a little bit of water because it does tend to soak in really fast and hard and often too dark when it's raw wood like this. And I kind of wanted to control how dark it was going to be. And on this craft, I do stain the front and the back. This part is a little different, I know, but I wanted burlap on wire, and the only way I could think to accomplish this was to cut the wire off of this ribbon. I'm gonna set that ribbon aside and use it for another craft, but this gave me that spindly little, like, you can see what I'm doing there, I'm kind of bunching it up. It's kind of like a messy bow, but it's all wires. I just wanted it to kind of resemble more like a woodsy look or branches because this is a maple leaf, so I didn't want it you know the craft to be completely droopy so that was how I went about doing that and for this one I'm going to use the actual ribbon so I cut the wire off and I'm going to cut this ribbon in half and this one I do want it to flow gently down the maple leaf and here's a little trick I've shown it before but if you just float a flame over the edge of your ribbon it will completely stop it from fraying because these ribbons are usually polyester and it just lightly melts the edges and seals them up nicely for you So I knew the stem of the maple leaf was very narrow and it was going to be a bit of a challenge to put a lot of flowing ribbon hanging off of it on such a small stem without it bulging over the side. And I didn't want a big bow at the top because that would cover the maple leaf shape. So I tied this really narrow at the top for now and I set it aside. And then I took some of the Dollar Tree hula skirt and I did the same thing. I just took about what are those like eight strips maybe of the hula skirt and I'm tying it into a thin knot at the top. So this turns out skinny enough where I feel comfortable gluing it on the front. Plus I'm after that little spray right there that I trimmed. I think that looks really neat. That adds that scarecrow kind of fall vibe and I'm taking some actual raffia here and tying it around the stem to give the stem a little bit more of a subtle bulk you know I'm just trying to get all these little things on there in a way where it will cover it up because I'm going to be gluing the buffalo ribbon on the back behind all of that
using the Dollar Tree lace ribbon. I'm just wrapping it around the width of my hand because we're gonna make a nice little bow here and spray it out. And this is just your simple bow where you tie it in the middle with some of the Dollar Tree twine. I take some of that lace ribbon and bend it in half, not completely even. One of the lengths is a little shorter than the other and I glue that down because that side was a little empty, but there I go. I'm gluing that bow on that I just made. You can see the twine in the middle. All I did was tie it in the middle with twine. And here comes our spinely little, I don't know, fallish kind of decor <laughs> embellishment. And I glued the berries on the top and a button. And then last, we're just going to outline that with the black marker pen because I didn't feel like the maple leaf stood out enough. And to make a really, really cute complimentary hanger, I'm going to string up these wood beads and glue them on the back. And a lot of you may know this trick already. I just put a little hot glue on the end of that twine there because it was fraying and getting more difficult to thread. Wait till it cools down that, you know, it's comfortable enough to touch. Spin it with your fingers and then you have a nice stiff end to go ahead and finish threading it through the wooden beads. So you do have to glue it on the edge of the fall leaf there or it will kind of squish together, but I think this came up gorgeous. For this next DIY, you're going to need this free printable I designed. It's down below in my description box. And again, I printed it up on tissue paper. All I did was just tape tissue paper onto computer paper and ran it through. And you're going to need some paint sticks. And shout out to Christina for sending me the paint sticks. Thank you so much. And I'm just going to bunch all of these paint sticks together. I use 10 altogether for this craft. So I bunch eight up and then I take one, cut it, and then the other one and cut it, and I'm gonna glue it on either end so that it's like a palette sign. Country farmhouse signs, anything that's kind of rustic or primitive is one of the few times I don't mind the end of the paint sticks showing. I think it adds to the craft, those little holes in between. I just kind of alternate them and sometimes I leave two together because it just looks like the wood is kind of chipping out or whatever. I don't know. I think it gives a nice edge or design to the sign. Not always, but some crafts I really like that and this is one of them. So I'm just cutting this out kind of in a, like, I'm not doing a square. I'm just, you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of cutting around the shape of the printout. And it's because the tissue paper, you can hardly see it unless you walk up close. So it doesn't have to be a perfect square or torn edges. It, it's just, I love this method. I don't know why I just do. And we're just taking good old fashioned Mod Podge and we're gonna Mod Podge this puppy down. So you can see how the paint already filled in the lines in between the paint sticks and I just decide to roll with it and keep it that way once I glue the paper on as well. And these are easy DIYs this week, you guys. I thought I should bring some of those out because I know a lot of you guys like those too, ones that look super cute and don't require hours and hours of crafting. This is one of the pluses with using tissue paper for sure, is you definitely do not need water. There is enough moisture in that Mod Podge that you can just stick it down and you can lift it back up if you're really gentle, just like you saw me do there and reposition it and rub out with a dry finger all of the wrinkles and paper is much different paper wants to crinkle up it wants to wrinkle and buckle you have to put a little water on it it's a completely different game when you're using tissue paper and i really appreciate that aspect of it for sure 
So you saw me give it a quick little dry there and I'm just taking a craft knife and cutting any of the paper out of those holes because that doesn't look quite natural enough. I don't like it. Super easy to do. You can see me doing it right there. It just slices right off. And now I'm taking some of the free wood I've spoken about in past videos. It's called Dunnage Blocks, D-U-N-N-A-G-E, Dunnage Blocks. They throw them out usually at Home Depot or Lowe's or most, I think it's most lumber yards. And if you've got a nice manager, they will give it to you and you can cut them up and use them for bases and they're very heavy and best of all they're free and that's just a scrap piece of wood on the back and we're going to use this as the stand to hold this cute little sign up And then I thought it would be fun to add a little Spanish moss at the bottom to make it have a farm feel because that's definitely autumn, even if you don't do farmhouse. <laughs> I've spoken about that in videos too, with all the pumpkin patches and hay rides and you know, you do end up doing the farm thing. So I put a little Spanish moss down and if you wanted to make this a Halloween craft, you could easily put the little Dollar Tree pumpkins at the bottom and make them little jack-o'-lanterns and hang some cobwebs off the top. You could actually make this sign either or. It's a very versatile sign because there are real inns in the United States called Sleepy Hollow Inn, which I thought was so cute. So it's definitely a versatile craft. I decided to do a non-spooky theme and just stick with the cute little craft farmhouse type things so I'm just making a simple bow out of the black and white buffalo check ribbon there I wrapped it in twine and we're shaping it a little bit there and that's it I wanted to keep mine really simple now I didn't know if I should add pumpkins on the bottom or not and I would love to hear back from you guys For this next craft, you're going to need this Dollar Tree cute little pillow, some burlap, and a pumpkin template, and some buttons, or any kind of embellishment you'd like. I'm going with some buttons that I took off from another craft. Some of you may remember I painted a chocolate box. It had some buttons on the top there, and I took those and saved those because they were wood. Yes, and I'm just taking my pen and tracing out the pumpkin shape. This is a really simple fast DIY, but it's one of those really simple, classy, clean. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about. Sometimes with crafts, less is more. It just ends up looking really, really sharp. So I cut out a pumpkin shape with a burlap. I glue it on to the front of this pillow and I'm gonna put some embellishment on and that's it. These pillows, I hope you can find them because they are, I mean, they scream sweater weather. They are the perfect cozy little pillow for fall and Christmas coming up. I bought four of them and I've got some great ideas coming up, but they're already done. They're already furry and soft and cute and they make excellent stuff, like little stuffers for baskets or metal big crates that you have. It depends what kind of decor you're doing, but these little tiny pillows are great accent decor pieces. For this next craft, you're going to need this size foam pumpkin from the Dollar Tree and a smaller foam pumpkin from the Dollar Tree. And I had an old rollaway bed I finally threw away and my husband cut some of these up for me because those little springs are very on trend. You can get them on eBay, I think for like a dollar or two, they're super cheap. Or you can use one of these candle stands from the Dollar Tree. Several options there. You would have to kind of look around, see what base you want. But you can do this craft with any base of your choice. 
and I start off by pulling those flowers off and I just want to tone this pumpkin down. He's a little too bright for the look I'm going to be going for. I'm going for a really soft, it, it's kind of neutral, but it's got the hint of orange and just the hint of green in these pumpkins. So I start off with the antique parchment from Apple Barrel and I try it and it's still a little too orangey. I don't, you can't see it on camera, but it's still too dark for what I was going for. So I'm letting it finish drying over there in the upper left hand corner and now I'm going to start working on my bigger pumpkin. We're just removing the cloth here and underneath comes these little foam pumpkins. They're so versatile and fun. And I just give him a quick coat of white and now I'm taking, <laughs> we're upping our ante a little bit. We're using chalk paint now, homemade chalk paint so that I get better coverage and I'm giving him one more coat. And then I'm going to use a green paint on this one. You can use whatever green paint you want. This is a color from Joanne's Fabric. I believe it's called Leaf Green. I just think it looks really you know, pretty and perfect for this season. But you can find this color in Apple Barrel. I've seen it. And you can also find it in the Waverly Chalk Paint. And of course, you can always home make it too. You can take a green and just add white until you get this color but it's still a little too dark. So I end up taking some of my white paint, just brushing it on, and I am using a tissue, not a wipe, because this is foam and I don't want to get it too wet. I'm using a regular roll Kleenex, and I just dry brush a little bit of the white paint on and then wipe it and smear it with the tissue. And then when both of these are dry, I decide I'd like to kind of keep that theme with this lace. I've got that going on in my home for this year for fall, so I kind of like to stay in themes. I think that's fun. So we're gonna make another looped bow where I just wrapped it around my fingers again, tied it in the middle with the twine, and then we're gonna spread it out into like a nice little flower shape. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this on the top of my pumpkin and this actually kind of reminds me of that little leather pumpkin that I made in my first fall video. Maybe it was my second fall video and I said it reminded me of a steampunk pumpkin when I was done and I, we're, I've got that in the home so that's one of my themes so I thought we're kind of going to stay in there. You can see I'm experimenting with a little stained wooden bead there for a stem but before I do that I just want to give this a little bit more raffia. I love raffia at fall. I just love to add it as an accent. So I loop it around, tie it, stick a little bit under that ribbon, glue my little stained wooden bead. I didn't film that because I figure you guys know you know, it's self-explanatory. I just stained the bead with a little bit of that water-based stain. And then I'm just shoving some raffia down the center here, using my hot glue gun to hold it down flat. And then I'm gonna hold the other little pumpkin on top of it while it dries so that it all dries nice and flat. And now I'm just holding it up and kind of visualizing where it's going to hang and I'm cutting off the pieces that are a little bent and wonky. <laughs> and then we're going to go ahead and make like a little bird's nest out of the Spanish moss so that it has a nice little base to sit on and I am going to hot glue it down just a little bit. Now off camera I do hot glue underneath because I'm choosing to use the spring as my base but I want to stage it and show you guys with both bases the little candle pillar and the spring. You let me know which one you guys like better but that's it and I think that this craft came up so beautiful.
For this DIY, I'm using some of these Dollar Tree pumpkins and a pretty napkin. And I'm also gonna use some paper I got from Hobby Lobby. It's an old vintage newspaper. I just thought the color was perfect and the look for the genre I'm going for. And it's very easy to get a pattern for these pumpkins because they are 3D. So you just rub anything hard along your paper and you can get an imprint on it and cut. And on the napkin, I just use a pencil. That was good enough for that one. And that gives me the pattern. Now what I did for this video, uh, I actually did a lot of research, is I chose common looks that cross over between cottage core and French country and combined them to create DIYs that can be used for either look. So it's kind of two videos in one. There are common denominators between the two. Basically, they're like, you know, the French country, it's like a French cottage that's out in the countryside that's often a working farm. And the cottage core is like an English cottage that is out in the countryside <laughs> that is often a working farm. So it wasn't that hard to actually combine these two because they're both romanticized versions of that. So here's my little handy dandy mini sander i love this thing when this dried i just went along the edges and sanded see how that kind of goes in the curves it's actually like a spongy material that you hold like the yellow part is soft and bendable it's not hard and it's really really good for sanding around hard to get in edges and now i'm just taking a little bit of the dollar tree ribbon i did want to add a little pop of orange and warmth to this because this is a fall diy and i wanted the ribbons to go out outwards along the edge of the pumpkin and no matter how I tied them I couldn't get it to quite stick and I didn't want to glue the ribbon down on the outer edge of the pumpkin because sometimes you see the hot glue through the ribbon so I chose to cut that orange um, gingham print there ribbon in half and then glue it so that it did what I wanted it to do and then just glue the rest of the little ribbon pieces in between and I decide of course it needs more lace so I'm just adding in some little pieces of lace ribbon here and there. I love these for that reason. You can definitely tuck in and add to or take away and it's no big deal. And of course the raffia bow on top to finish it off. And look at that. Those are so perfect for either one of these looks with French country or cottage core. That is just perfect. And now we have the dunnage block. <laughs> there they are. I've spoken about these many times in previous videos. You can find them at Lowe's, Home Depot, most lumber yards. The little groove in there is where they strap big huge plywood sheets that they bring in and they just use this wood to lower it down onto the pallet. They're like pallets basically and then they throw them away and they're often naturally rustic. They have ink print on it, which makes it look more vintage, and they're perfect for crafting if you like these kind of genres, like farmhouse, cottage core, French country, anything like that, they're perfect. And if you have a nice manager, they'll give them to you for free if you ask. Now I'm just adding a brown leaf to keep it nice and warm and romantic. And I also tilted these pumpkins at a little angle outwards just to add a little extra charm. I don't know if you noticed that when I glued them together. And I'm distressing it a bit because once I put it on the dunnage block with the ink, I realized in order to tie it in, it looks a little bit better. And I'm gonna take some of the Dollar Tree moss and glue it down in that groove. Now when I show these at the end, I did, all, all through this video, I collected photos from the English countryside and the French countryside in the fall to make it extra special for you guys so you can enjoy the whole feeling of the romantic farmhouse. But here it is and I think it's so, so pretty. For this next DIY, you're going to need 
that domino game from the Dollar Tree, one of their plastic trays, and this free printable that I designed. It'll be down below in my description box. You can use any printable you want, but if you want that one, it will be down below in my description box. And you start off by drawing a design for a leg. So we're making little legs for our tray here, you guys. I was so excited to share this with you all because this really is a game changer for Dollar Tree faux trays with the legs because we always just kind of try and find something we can glue on from the Dollar Tree, like the ping pong balls or the pot of gold leprechaun little legs or wooden cubes or wooden beads. But this takes it to another level because you can make wooden legs pretty much however you want. You just trace out the shape and then you cut it out because as you can see, it was easy enough to cut and then you're going to put it together. So you do have to sand a little bit because it does splinter. And also remember to draw the design on the wood side and on the printed side with the polka dots because you're going to need them to be on either corner. You'll see, but just trust me, you have to do one of each <laughs> so that you have the reverse leg on the reverse side. And I'm just measuring here, you know, to get my little print in there. And here I go gluing the legs down. So you just have to carefully line them up along the edge of the tray. And this is why it's important that you draw the design on the wood side and on the dotted side because you're doing it in opposite angles. And then you put your strip of hot glue. I would actually recommend using a stronger glue like hot wood glue. Well, I, I call it hot wood glue, but the link down below in my description box, if you go check out the glue I use for that, it claims to glue metal, glass, everything. So I just recommend you use a stronger hot glue for this project. And then I also put a little bit of glue right where the angle met there. And as it dries, I move up and do it to the top as well, because when you paint it, that's going to make it look like one solid piece. So it just looks, or you could use wood filler too, if you wanted to, but it comes out really good. And I want this tray to be warmer because it is an autumn tray. So I chose to use the color territorial beige from Apple Barrel Paint to distress it just a little bit. I'm not trying to make it look like wood, more like painted wood, maybe or just stressed a little bit, maybe chipped a little bit, the paint chipping off. But if I just get a distressed look, that's fine too. And I took a little Mod Podge. I'm going to now glue down my print with the Mod Podge. So after I get the print glued on, I'm going to take my homemade white chalk paint and paint those little legs. Now watch what happens when I paint up towards the right hand corner where the hole is. See how it disappears? That's because I put the hot glue on the inside seam there and it, you know, rolled up and melted into that hole and behaves like a wood filler and makes your legs look more connected and nice. And now after it dries, I'm just taking some of the apple barrel paint again in territorial beige and distressing it. To me, this part's important. I always take the darker color and make sure I put it in the seams because with an old tray, those are the parts that would get dirty and kind of collect dust over time. And it just makes it look, to me, it adds a little more realism in my opinion. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just adding the darker color around the edges and that's it. And I love this. For this next craft, you're going to need some more Mod Podge and some pretty napkins in your choice and some of these Dollar Tree foam pumpkins. And I'm going to take this little foam pumpkin and start tearing it apart. It comes apart really easy. These are so fun and versatile. You can do so many different things with this. Today, obviously, we're 
gonna make these little this little guy move into the genre of the cottage core and French country look but really these little foam pumpkins I think they're even hollow when you cut them in half they're pretty you know the possibilities are pretty endless with those so I'm just taking the napkin that I used for the other pumpkins because I want to tie them in. I'm actually making this for a friend who is transitioning from French country to cottage court. So all these DIYs are for her. And I'm going to make that pumpkin match the first that little wood ones that I did. And this is just really simple. It's good old fashioned decoupage. You're just going to tear up your napkins, put Mod Podge on your pumpkin and tap that puppy on so that it goes in the grooves so you don't lose your pumpkin shape because you want people to know you did a pumpkin. And that's it. You can find me and follow me on both Instagram and Pinterest. On Pinterest, I have something really neat going. I made a board for my subscriber friends crafts. So when you are inspired by something that I make and you make it, I would love to see a photo of it. Even if it isn't something I made, maybe it just inspired you to craft something like a spinoff. I still would love to see it. I love to see what you guys do. And I thought Pinterest was a perfect place because that's where so many people go for inspiration. And it's just a great way for the rest of the world to appreciate what you've done as well. So I had a lot of questions on how to go about doing this. You upload your photo as a pin on Pinterest, and then you can send it to me in a private message over on Pinterest. There's a little symbol to the left-hand side if you're on a computer that looks like a pin, like literally a bulletin board pin and a plus sign. And you click that and that will allow you to share your pin with me and then I can share it to my board. Now I used to upload them myself, but I was getting some complaints <laughs> that it was getting confusing, which were my crafts and which were other people's crafts. So now I don't do that anymore. I have to upload it as a separate pin to keep it, I guess, less confusing for everybody. If you want people to know who did it, make sure you write your name under there as the title. If you're a private person, you can just write a description of what you did and you don't have to write anything at all. That's fine too. But I truly appreciate all of you talented people out there. Thank you so much to those of you that have shared your crafts with me. It's been a joy to see. So as you can see, I ended up having to skewer this little guy and not have my fingers touch him so much so that I wasn't accidentally removing the napkins while I was trying to apply it. And I use a piece of foam from some packaging I got from something I ordered. And that is a great trick for anything you need, you know, to have minimal contact with like Easter eggs, wooden beads. You'll see it later on in this video. I use it again, but the foam block, save those you guys. For staking and letting things dry up in the air it works really great and so I choose to use a cinnamon stick for the stem just to add a little scent for my friend I thought that would be cute it'll be like a really pretty smelling little pumpkin and you just push it down in the center of the foam I get a lot of questions about those clippers on the right hand side too that was from a girls gardening set from Walmart about 10 years ago that my kids got me but I'm pretty sure it's a tool you can find in any gardening center so that's all that is and it cuts wood really well because it's meant to prune roses so <laughs> I've had good luck with it and of course we're gonna keep the lace theme going I'm just making a little lace bow I'm gonna hot glue that on I'm going to be adding some greenery and some raffia and that's it we're gonna end up with a super duper cute little French country slash cottage core pumpkin For this craft, you're going to need this printable. It's actually a free download for your desktop as a wallpaper. Some wooden beads, I'm using the Dollar Tree beads, and this dry erase board from the Dollar Tree, and some wax. Now, I actually recommend in hindsight that you use a water-based stain or just brown paint to do the faux wood. I'm using the wax, so that's why I put it there to let you know what I used. 
but we're well we'll wait till we get to that part but <laughs> it probably wasn't the best choice so i am using a blush brush that's another one of my favorite methods to spread this wax on and try and make this board look like faux wood it doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be covered you know with the photo a little bit so just I'm more concerned about the edges and I'm just tapping it here and lightly kind of brushing it as the wax is drying to try and get some different dimensions and texture to make it look more like it's wood so this ends up being one of my favorite crafts but here's what happens I didn't rough up the surface of the whiteboard and I didn't put any Mod Podge on it I didn't take any steps primer nothing to make it more you know for adhesion so <laughs> the wax kept wanting to rub off. I don't know if I'd left it overnight for hours if it would eventually cured. It seems to now when I touch it, it, it doesn't change. But when I go to use my favorite method for not wrinkling the glue stick right there, the Dollar Tree glue stick, the wax and the glue stick don't mix. And I think it's because the glue stick is kind of waxy and the wax is waxy and they just weren't bonding. So <laughs> you can see how easy I'm lifting it up. I actually left that in to show you how easy, I mean, it's not sticking. So I'm just trimming the edge there and off camera, I do end up lifting it up. I do half a side at a time, you know, one side, then the other side. I do end up putting Mod Podge underneath it and drying it just to get that image to stick down. But word of warning, you guys, rough up your surface a little bit. Use a paint or a water-based acrylic stain. If you're going to do wax, wait overnight to let it really cure and dry before you attempt to stick your image on. So here's an oldie but goodie. We take the Dollar Tree beads, put them on a skewer, and paint them. I was in the mood to do this. And my favorite method for doing this is the sponge brush because it's got that tapered end and it allows you to kind of spin the beads and put the tapered end in between them and that way you hit everything. And the beads do require two coats. So this is my first coat with my homemade chalk paint. If you're interested in this video, it's a new recipe. I love it. It's an, a, you know, one coat for the most part. I mean, these bees are super bright, but it's super, super silky and smooth. And for those of you that were having trouble finding the ingredient for my original chalk paint video, this is a wonderful alternative. And I will leave the link down below in my description box for that video. So there's the foam again. And again, it's a great place to dry things. And I do end up taking, you know, I want, I want to make these a bit warmer. So I use the apple barrel paint in the antique parchment and I just do one coat of that and that's perfect. All the colors completely covered and you could see they came off really easy. They didn't stick to the skewer stick. So everything worked out beautifully. And now I'm just taking and hot gluing them around this image. And this is what we have so far. Now, because I wasn't sure if my friend wanted the extra ribbon and embellishment on this, because maybe I think she might prefer to hang it as a breadboard eventually when it falls over. And that's another thing. Some of these DIYs like the tray and the lady are definitely all year round DIYs. They're not just for fall. So I wanted to give her that option. So I just made a little loop around with the Dollar Tree lace ribbon there and I'm making it a bow and just kind of, you know, fanning it out but I tied it on using some Dollar Tree twine and the greenery on the side there I'm just going to use that and tuck it down underneath the twine so that again it can be removed but this is one of my favorite DIYs today I think this came up absolutely gorgeous it's perfect for both cottage core and French country because both of those looks celebrate the romanticized version of living out in the country or a romanticized farmhouse and lastly, I take my black marker and I'm going around the edge just to distress it a little bit and that's it. I absolutely love the way this came out. Walmart's crafting aisle is beating the Dollar Tree on certain wood items. You can get this wood oval there for $1. So I'm just going to go about removing the sticker and I do get this one coat or rather a whitewash of chalk paint. If you want to know my recipe for my chalk paint, I made a video, I actually made two, but the first video I created, the ingredient is kind of hard to find if 
almost impossible now in the USA. So I leave it up for the rest of the international community. But if you're in the USA and I think also Canada, check out my second video. The link again is down below in my description box. And that will give you three wonderful non-toxic versions that you can use. Wonderful alternatives that actually end up being cheaper than the original video. So here I found this free printable and you saw also that I used my silicone mold from Amazon. I love those silicone molds. I just squirt hot glue in and then when the hot glue dries, I take it out, trim it up a little bit and save it as a nice little garnish piece. So I printed this on regular computer paper this time, cut it out and then I painted the uh, silicone mold there, the little hot glue mold. I painted that with some nutmeg brown from Apple Barrel Paint, glued it down and now I'm just trimming it to fit the oval size. You can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to hit that with a little bit of white paint. I just thought that the nutmeg brown was such a pretty color. It looks either like rust or cinnamon. It's just perfect for the fall time. And when you hit it with white paint like this, it brings out all of the pretty designs of those moles. You can see that. And it also gives it, I think, a really pretty distressed look. Also, this imagery was applied with a glue stick and I did have to lift it up a couple times to get it straight. And I also cut off the two leaves. There was extra leaves there to the left. So if you do this craft, I'm just pointing out the things that you, you know, if you want to recreate it exactly the way I did, you do have to remove the extra leaves. I just thought that was a little bit too much. And now I'm taking some raffia that I got on Amazon. I've also talked about this in previous videos. It's really strong, sturdy, nice raffia. It comes in a package of three in red and green. And it's a really pretty red too. It's like a burgundy wine red. It's really pretty. And I just twisted it so that I could thread on some wooden beads from Amazon, 100 for $4.50 because it was marked down 22%. It still might be marked down. The link is down below in my description box. It's a great deal right now. And I'm just hot gluing it on the back of this sign so that we can hang it up and that's it I love this I think it's a beautiful fall decor piece I found this super cute container at Ross on clearance for $2.49. I was so excited, but I thought it would be fun to make it a double-sided container because fall kind of ushers in the holiday season for Christmas. So I'm just starting off with taking some of the rubbing alcohol to clean off the surface here so that we can prep it for the next step. This is a free printable I found online of a watercolored pumpkin. I think that is so pretty. And for this particular DIY, I wanted it to be simple. The word signs are going out. They're not in in a big way anymore because most of us probably have more than enough in our home. So I like to kind of keep it simple to keep balance in the home. And I thought that this was perfect. So my favorite method for printing up and transferring imagery for a while now has been on tissue paper. It's just gift tissue paper like you use for a present and I tape it with masking tape onto some cardstock and run it through my printer. And I discovered another little tip if you don't want to save your cardstock. I mean, you can untape it carefully and save your cardstock, but I'm not worried about it, is to leave the image on the cardstock because you're able to cut really close to the lines. In other words, tissue paper is really flimsy and it's hard to cut evenly. You can make mistakes. It was just a struggle. And I, well, when you need to cut up to the line like that pumpkin, I cut it out really close right up to the image. It is better to leave it on the cardstock to give you a nice foundation. So as you can see, I'm using some Mod Podge and I taped a little bit of tape there and measured to make sure it was matching on the other side because I wanted it to be directly behind the Christmas trees. I knew that would drive me nuts if it was off to the side and I just tap it on and then here's what I do because I knew I wouldn't like the overhang of the, I don't know if that's the right word, but I wouldn't like the Mod Podge showing. So I'm taking a Kleenex and just wiping the Mod Podge off 
really carefully around the edge and I want to get right up to the edge and do it really really well so I put my homemade chalk paint inside the container to kind of weight it down so it doesn't roll too much and then I use a little bit more of the rubbing alcohol and some tissue and really really clean off every last bit of the Mod Podge. Now here's a great find from Hobby Lobby when I went on their clearance aisle that day I picked up three knobs and a bunch of hardware and frames and oh it's a great deal you guys if you are lucky enough to catch your clearance aisle when it's stocked there's some fantastic deals I use some of the Gorilla Super Glue to put this on because that's a super strong glue. I love it. And I'm trying to get in the middle the best I can here. But I wanted to let you guys know I got really lucky with this. This is the next day. And as you can see, it dried with no wrinkles. It kind of had some, well, not just hardly any. There was like, it wasn't really wrinkles as much as it was like a soft buckling. But when it dried, it straightened itself out. So what I ended up doing, and unfortunately I didn't film it, was I just took some poly clear acrylic that I had in a can and painted it really carefully on the top because I just don't want any overspray or any lines from another product but I really love the way this came out. This sign was another great find at my Hobby Lobby clearance day. It's 69 cents, regularly $8.99. I think I picked up like 12 or 14 signs that day because even though some are $1.99, then you find the ones that are 69 cents and so it all evens out and I think it evens out to actually be cheaper than the Dollar Tree. So I found this free printable online. I thought it was really gorgeous. It just reminds me of the French or English countryside and it's got those warm colors that I knew would be perfect for fall especially because we're only going to be using a section of this. I'm not using the whole imagery because the sign is long and narrow. So I did my tissue printing on cardstock trick where you tape gift tissue down on cardstock with masking tape and run it through your printers so it prints the image on the tissue paper and it's a wonderful easy transparent way to get complex imagery like this which by the way when I looked up what's in for farmhouse 2022 nature scenes like this that's going to be the new trend and it will continue to grow so I guess we're moving away from word signs and we're moving towards nature signs like that, which is really, really pretty. So I used some water to tear the edges there. I just painted it on and teared it so that it would be nice and shredded. So hopefully it will blend into my little um, canvas there a, a bit more. And I like to put my image down and hold it in place where I want it and then put my glue, you know, glue it down with a glue stick from the Dollar Tree first on one half and then I lift the other side up and on the other half. And I'm just showing you how amazing this is I mean there is no wrinkles the glue stick is just a fantastic method and it dries really quick too so once it's dry I'm just taking a really coarse nail file using it like sandpaper to sand the edges off for a nice clean finish and then I use a little bit of the white chalk paint and we're just gonna dry brush a little bit I actually do several processes here I dry brush over the, uh, that was burnt umber from Apple Barrel Paint that I originally distressed it with. And then I'm putting a little bit of white paint over that. And then I'm gonna dry brush again with some nutmeg from Apple Barrel. So I wanted kind of different shadows and hues coming through kind of more of a mottled look so that it would definitely blend in better. So even after this nutmeg color dries, I go in again right here and soften it with a little bit more white paint to get the finest or the final finished result. I've talked about this in previous videos, like hair, if you, you know, people look at you and think, oh, you have brown hair. There's actually five or six different colors going on in there to make up that one color that looks brown. And it's the same with paint. If you want it to have like a certain look, you gotta add layers and then you get different little shadows, things that you don't even necessarily recognize with the naked eye. You can see your brain registers and it just looks better. So I'm using some antiquing wax to distress the edges and that's it, we're all done. This DIY is a request from my daughter. 
we all see those stereotypical little signs that you have on your entry table. And so I'm using a Dollar Tree sign and to handle that glitter, I'm just gonna give it two coats of spray paint. I did it on the deck, you guys, because I was afraid it was gonna spray on my camera lens. <laughs> Hairspray is unforgiving that way. But I went ahead and did that. That way you don't have to worry about the glitter or covering the back. And then I gave it one coat of chalk paint and I am now drawing some faux little shiplap lines. And we're just making that stereotypical happy sign that you see on Thanksgiving day that says, you know, something about your family, something about gathering. She doesn't have one. And she said, mom, can you believe that? I don't have one. And I would love one just to put, she wants to put on her entry table with her little pumpkins and everything. You just gotta have, some, sometimes it feels good to just have that stereotypical stuff. And Dollar Tree always offers you a super inexpensive way to get it done. So I found the sign and both this decal right here at the Dollar Tree and I saw it and thought this was perfect. This is a rectangle sign. This is the right wording for Thanksgiving Day. We're just going to dry brush a little bit of the nutmeg brown from Apple Barrel on there. Slap this decal on there and voila we are almost done so I decide that the top looks a little bit empty I just figure I'm looking at it right now thinking the sign just feels like it's missing something so just to add a little something just a little accent I decided to take some of the Dollar Tree jute twine and wrap it around about six times on the top and then I go ahead and float a little bit of flame over it to get rid of any of the stray hairs because the only thing about the Dollar Tree jute twine that I don't like is it tends to be a lot more furrier than like the Walmart brand and that kind of messes up your craft sometimes but it's easy to fix all you do is just burn it off somebody told me you can take a razor blade and shave it off I tried that it didn't work for me but if you guys try it and it works please let me know and I just secure it in the back with a little bit of hot glue there I go getting the stray little hairs off of it and I actually like the little charred look it leaves behind I think it adds a more rustic feel especially around Thanksgiving and autumn and that's it. This is a super cute, again, stereotypical sign, and she didn't have to pay $15.99 from a craft store. She got it for $2.50. I'm going to be using two packages of the bamboo rings that they sell from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to take the smaller hoops and put them together in this formation. Now you can go ahead and make two of these and make one big and one small. Today I'm just going to be making one and it's going to be the smaller hoops. This is an embarrassingly old pillowcase from my son, bless his heart. He moved out on his own. I am totally not responsible for this, but he finally got rid of it when it disintegrated in the washing machine. And then I said, hey, can I have this? Because this is the perfect material to do what I'm showing you right here, how you just cut it and then it tears beautifully and it's got that, you know, the nice little ragged edges, perfect rag craft. So I'm gonna use some of those little strips to tie the top of this together and the bottom to hold it into place. Next, I'm just gonna be going and tying these little rag strips on all over the hoops to cover every last inch of wood. I'm not gonna double knot them, I guess, or knot them. I'm just gonna tie them once and tie them really tight and kind of push them together really tight. That helps hold them in place as well. If you haven't guessed already, we are making a little rag pumpkin. I'm going to use this Hobby Lobby ribbon that I got 50% off and I'm gonna go ahead and cut it up the center and I'm also going to cut the edges off because it's wire. But I, I know you could pull the wire out, but I also don't want that little black edge there. Um, I just want the whole thing to kind of match the rag look. The end of this ribbon or the edges of this ribbon will fray a little bit and I just felt that tied in more with the fraying of the pillowcase. I'm also going to use some buffalo check ribbon because that's perfect for fall and do the exact same thing. So this is what's called a messy bow. That's what I'm making. I have a full bow tutorial video called 10 Bow Hacks out there that shows you how I make every single one of my bows. It's time stamped. So if you wanna go see how I made that bow, go ahead and check out that video. It will be down below in my description box. 
for the stem I decided to take some of the Dollar Tree nautical rope I just kind of took a little it's not the full thickness rope it's kind of you can see I pulled one strip away from it because I wanted it to bend back and forth and look more like the, it comes apart in all those like little mini threads and I thought that would look really cool to get the stem to look more like all those little mini threads glued together because that kind of looks like a real pumpkin stem. So now I'm just adding some different fall leaves. I'm gonna add some Spanish moss. I'm just gonna go ahead and decorate this little rag pumpkin. These are some Dollar Tree candle pillars that you find in the candle section. I bought two of them and I'm using the color Antique Parchment in Apple Barrel Paint just to give it one coat. I'm going to go ahead and paint both of these first before I glue them together. I'm using Gorilla Glue for this, it's hot glue, and I just found it strong enough to hold this craft together because it is just seasonal. I'm not gonna throw it across the room or anything. If you want a super, super strong hold, go ahead and use like a super glue or a Gorilla Super Glue E6000. I don't like that because the smell is just too intense for me, but any kind of really strong glue like that will work. There's also multi-purpose hot glues. I've got a great one down below in my description box. It's meant to hold glass, plastic, wood, everything. And that would also work for this craft. So now I'm taking some of my homemade chalk paint and I'm gonna go ahead and paint this little wood round that I got from Walmart for a dollar. So this is cheaper than the Dollar Tree. I am trying to go, you know, if I'm in the store buying other things, I do go down the craft section and pick up whatever I can that's still a dollar at Walmart. And then I decide that I actually don't really like the antique parchment. I've got a different idea for this and I go ahead and paint the pillars again in white. I'm using the Antique Wax by Folk Art. Any antique wax will work, and I'm just giving it a light dry brush. I'm gonna dry brush this entire thing. I chose this color because I think it's a really warm color. It's perfect for the fall season, and we're just gonna distress it all the way, as you can see, all the way down to the bottom. Look how pretty that is. I love the wax for this. Next, I made this little piece here for another craft, and I never ended up using it. It's just the Dollar Tree Cube cubes glued together with some craft sticks around the edge to make it look nice and neat. I chose to use this as the base here because it is heavy and it will hold my little pumpkin upright and this way I can just put the hot glue on top of that and I don't have to damage the stand I guess in case I want to use it for another holiday decor piece. You'll see me here playing around with the bottom, how I'm going to cover it with some fall leaves, greenery. I end up using Spanish moss. It comes up so beautiful. This is perfect for farmhouse, cottage, core styles, primitive, you name it. It's a beautiful fall piece. So this is a family sign that I found at the Dollar Tree. It's a little electrical candle thing. It's super cute, but I just want the family part off of it. And as you can see, it comes apart really easy. And I don't know what was up with me with antique parchment in this video. I went ahead and painted everything in antique parchment because I think I was looking for warmth because it's an autumn craft. And then I went, well, that's not gonna pop enough. You're not gonna see that. So I end up painting this family sign white after I painted it with the antique parchment. Here's some Dollar Tree books. I haven't done this craft yet. They're always fun though, aren't they? The books when the seasons come, you know, the holidays, they're so much fun. I usually make them out of wood or out of the tumbling tower blocks. 
this time I'm actually going to use the books and I was after black books so usually I can't find the black books that's why I skip it because I love the black for fall I think that's perfect and I'm just cutting off the edge there so I can get a measurement and we're going to be using the vinyl here from the Dollar Tree and we're going to use this for a template so we can get the right width and I'm going to cut out three book edges. I'm not sure that's the right word for it. If it's not, you can go ahead and shout out in the comments. I absolutely love reading your comments. For me, it's one of the best parts of doing YouTube. And then we're just gonna go ahead and stick it down. It makes a beautiful edge and the vinyl makes a beautiful edge, period, for all of the books. You can even use shelving paper for this if you found the right kind of shelving paper. It's a great way to add character for a season or a feeling that you wanna give off or even just to match your home decor style and it's super easy to do. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and use this raffia to tie it together like you would with a gift. I have spoken about this raffia before. I bought it from Amazon. It comes in a package of three. It's, let's see, red, green, and then this color right here, and it's super strong. It's like a ribbon, so if you're interested, it's down below in my description box, and it's super cheap. It what was when I bought it. But I will say, the one thing that I kind of don't like about it is that, you know, there's that raffia that I used to have that was somewhere between a grass, like Spanish moss, not quite that, you know, thin and scattered, but not quite this thick like a hula skirt either. It was, it shredded and it kind of looked, I think you guys know what I'm talking about. It almost looked like hay and I kind of miss that. I'm going to hunt for it and get some next time at like the Hobby Lobby or Michael's. I'm going to try and get that for the fall crafts because I do love that look. Here's another one of my bows. This is either the floral bow or the pom-pom bow. They're kind of made the same way, but one's thicker and uses more loops. And it's in the bow video if you want to see how I made that. I'm just going to go ahead and fix all those little loops. All I did was just use two ribbons to loop around and around together so that I had two different looks going on there. I thought that was kind of pretty. And now I'm taking my permanent marker and I'm gonna go around and make like little faux stitches all around the words. But after I was done, I thought, I don't know, maybe I should have just left that white. Let me know what you think in the comments because I was looking at it. My family loves it, but I almost felt like I don't know, I had imagery of 101 Dalmatians going on there, so. <laughs> but I love it, but I just wasn't sure. You know, I can change this, you guys. I can just paint over it, so let me know what you think, because I'd like to actually take a vote on that. Maybe I should put that in my community section, but I would love to know what you guys think. So I end up using some fall leaves, some twine, some raffia, and even some greenery because to be fair, when the trees first start to turn during fall, there are green leaves mixed in with the fall leaves. It's so pretty and I just felt like it was missing that pop of color. So I use a little bit of the Dollar Tree eucalyptus and just decorate this. I bought a bunch of these velvet pumpkins at one of the local craft stores here so I have them this year to use I was just in the mood they are really really cute smaller than the Dollar Tree so fun for decor like this and now I'm just going to wind up some of that raffia around my finger kind of make like a little spray formation and tuck it on the right side of the well kind of on the right towards the left just to balance the decor on the top of these books. We're all done and this is how my project came out.